Exaggerations, independent thought, insensitivity, and other offensive content. We strongly urge all viewers and listeners to keep their brains and their skulls throughout the entire duration of this podcast. Failure to do so will result in immediate death. If you wish to support this podcast, there are several ways to do so. First, you can sign up for a free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants. Audible is the foremost seller of audiobooks today with hundreds of thousands of titles to satisfy all manner of tastes. Second, if you shop on Amazon.com, please use the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of this video. Every purchase you make helps to support this podcast's existence. Third, please peruse our merchandise and see if any of it strikes your fancy. We sell a lot of t-shirts, so we must be doing something right. One more thing before I go. To make an official submission to the Drunken Peasants, whether it be a video for one of our segments, or fan art, or a picture of you wearing one of our shirts, or anything you think we might want to use on the show, that stuff needs to be sent to the Drunken Peasants Facebook inbox. Please do not send correspondence, as this will be deleted unread. With all that shit out of the way, it's time to begin the show. Coming to you live from the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ. Bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! Ah, hey man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. What the fuck you talking about, atheist? Yeah, it's okay. You're nothing, okay. KJ. You're garbage. It's okay. I just want to no, no, be no, light. No, 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 You're no, garbage, no, no, no. <laughs> And now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We'll do it live. Well, do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! Fucking thing! Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, episode 244. 244. Yeah. Here's the 244 more. I'm got a fuckers. tobacco situation oh, going on here. Just in case anybody's wondering. And anybody wants to know this is just tobacco. So, um, yeah, welcome to episode 244. Uh, this is a pre-recorded episode. For some reason, that breaks some of your little minds out there. Yeah, yeah I, I don't get it. People asking questions like, is this the episode this or is what's Thursday. going on? Right now it's Thursday. Tomorrow will be Friday. So this is we're not doing this live. We're doing it today, which is Thursday. Tomorrow, which was when you will be the future. It, Friday. The future. But that's not written for us yet. For all we know, we could be dead when this goes live. That's true. But we got some things to promote. Uh, Drunken Peasants Patreon, patreon.com forward slash DP. You want to see uh, the next private show where you we're going to do the want Drunken to Peasants miss drink-a-thon, the Drinkathon. Dude. After every video, each one of us will take a shot, except for Ben because he actually needs to be sober enough. I'll to take run the a show. couple. But he's gonna take. He's gonna drink too. He's just yeah, not gonna get his drunk. He'll do. A, he'll else. do a few in the beginning. But yeah, we're me, TJ, and Paul are probably gonna be plastered. So everybody's. The last time drunk. I got severely shit faced on the show, that was like back when we were still in double digits. That was when yeah. th- I, that show lasted like four hours. Yes. Yeah. And I tried to end it like five times. I was like, <laughs> "Did I end the show? I want to make sure." I went back to check it multiple times. 
Yeah, they yeah. could tell when I was like leaning against the wall. You were like doing this thing where you were like, yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, Ben could barely stand up. Yeah. It's he probably went, the most wasted I've been in a while. Oh, like, yeah. You went in twice to check if the show had been yeah. uploaded. But, wow. yeah, if you guys want to see us drunk, all of us drunk, uh, patreon.com forward slash DP. Be, uh, be interesting. Um, you know, you got to become a Patreon, a patron before the end of this month if you want to see next month's yep. show. So be Do sure it. to keep that in mind. Do it. Um, and uh, we'd also want to uh, do one last push for the Drunken Peasants Seattle meetup. We have 89 confirmed going, 58 additional people interested. Uh, if you are coming, please let us know. RSVP down in the um, event page down below in the description section of this video. Uh, it's at the Muse Aquarium in Seattle from uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And if if you're under 21 and you want to meet us, we'll be walking out of the Muse Aquarium yeah, around around nine o'clock. Yeah. So if you guys so want, if, if you're under if you're under 21 and you still want to do do meet the drunken peasants, I mean, we'll probably come out and hang out. I mean, like, uh, there's a good chance TJ will be standing in the yeah. alley behind the building. There's a good chance <laughs> I will, there is a pretty solid chance I will spend time outside the building, depending on how it's laid out and you know. Because that's what he did almost the whole time. If there's the a dark year. alley to stand yeah. in, then probably I'll end up there eventually. You know, so that there's that. Muse Aquarium, Seattle, rock on. RSVP link down below in the description. Do it. Do it this now. This is your chance, Pacific Northwest. Do it. Your fucking chance. To Do it. The time is now. Don't be lame as fuck. All don't, right. Don't be faggots. And also, of course, our most popular and successful shirt, the manatees, macaroni and cheese. An individual situation designed <laughs> by Mr. Super. Only 99 cents for manatees. Not the shirt, but the actual Just go uh, to our t-shirt store. Check yep. it out. Check out our other shirts. We got other shirts. They're all good. Every shirt is fucking good. But this is probably the best, <coughs> in my opinion. All right. All right. All right so, so we're going to get some guests on now. Fucking call some people. Uh, uh, Paul's egos. <sighs> where do you get... Jesus. How many fucking shows does Paul need God, to be on, God, fucking man? Paul is here again. <sighs> Whatever. Disgusting. It's really disgusting. Paul, Paul. Man, what a, a what, a, what a way to be greeted onto the show. Oh, I'm fucking disgusting. <laughs> it is disgusting. Well, you know, if the shoe fits. You're fucking gross, Paul. And we have another mm -hmm. guest. Is the crowd on? I don't hear him. I don't hear anything. Well, maybe he's struggling with some issues. Maybe we'll hear him in a moment. But Paul's here anyway. Paul, you oh, could do a yeah, you could do a German voice. Why don't you just be Kraut? Yeah. Paul, you're gonna play Kraut today. Uh, the only German voice I can do is the sly Nazi, though. Like, <laughs> that's, 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 really, that's fine. That's like, fine. That works for me. Uh, Let's do that. Excuse, excuse me, TJ. Uh, <laughs> do you have your papers? You wouldn't uh, perhaps know anyone who would harbor a Jew, do you? <laughs> I love it. Heisengruppen, like, Flaggen, Schnurgen! <laughs> Heisengruppen. Hans Gruber. Yeah, when we went to... When we went to Europe almost exactly a year ago, Germany was one of the few countries in that area that we didn't go to. Nope. Yeah. I've been there once before. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I heard they have sausage there. <laughs> yeah. They have that all over Europe. Too. Yeah. Yeah, but I heard they have, like, sausage there. Yeah, yeah, they do. They, they do. They have sausage. For sure. Are you sure. I also had sausage in Austria and Switzerland. But Germany has the best sausage. I don't know. I they, guess. They take the most pride in it anyway. I guess. <laughs> we have sausage here. I don't know, man. Every time I go to a German restaurant, half the fucking menu is sausage. So you know those oh, motherfuckers yeah. like sausage. Hold on. Is our, he... sh our schnitzelwassens are most tasty. Hold on. Uh, he says he can't hear us. We can't hear him either. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. We'll have to figure this out. Hassen, Flugen, Groben, Schmogen. Paul goes to Davina Schnitzel. I would not be caught dead in such <laughs> an establishment. <coughs> no, well, I mean, I can hear none oh. of you. Oh, oh now, now we can now hear we you. Can hear you. We can hear me, but we can hear you. I can't hear you. Damn it. I don't know why he can't hear us. Yeah, that's weird. We can hear you. Well, well, I, can't hear I, don't know so, yeah. I don't know why I'm telling you. We can him. hear you. It's like he can't hear us. We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. I'm going to call him back. 
Hmm. Yelling through the internet. Hmm. Yes, call me back. Yeah, yeah, uh, yelling through the internet, a.k.a. the amazing atheist's career. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a pretty good summation of TJ's uh, career. It is. Also, yelling in empty rooms. <coughs> Fuck, faggot, <coughs> piece of shit. Let me try it. No. Are you there? Uh, no, okay, no, you give it up. No, all right, you can have it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to add him back really quick. Add him. I'm the group and... We're just, fucking, you know. dude, we're, just, we're just gonna repeat all the German we know from like video games. These Germans, yeah. man, they're I'm disgusting my, people. I fear. I know that's not a Sieben. Yeah, I have, I have to restart my Skype. I will be back with you soon. All right, okay. thank you. I don't know if he can hear us. Du hast mich. Oh yeah, Rammstein. Rammstein. So you had some beef with this gentleman on, uh, on the internet. TJ? I don't know. Yeah, we had some beef jerky, dude. Yeah, you yeah, had some some sausage. Actually, we had oh, some yeah, turkey jerky. You had TJ. some schnitzel together? There was a schnitzel between you? <laughs> there was. One of you had your schnitzel out, and the other pulled his schnitzel out, and you compared schnitzel. I'll, I'll tell you what. Two schnitzels. Ju only because we're on the fucking subject. Remember how last time you went to Schmitz with us? We we actually found a better German restaurant in Columbus. Scotty doesn't mm, agree. Don't, you don't like I, it? Don't, no, I, don't no like I, I like it. I like it, that, but I don't like Bahama it. I like Schmitz Mama, better. Mama, dude, that Bahama Mama at Schmitz was fire. You cannot fucking deny. Does this new place have something yeah. better than the Bahama Mama? I don't think so. I don't think it does, but I think it's better overall. Like... But um, the Bahama Mama, it is, like, hmm. it reminds me of the Bahama places, Mama is like sausage. Even if you don't like sausage, you'll like it. It it reminds me of places you would actually see in Germany. Yeah, it, I would say that that is true about the place. It's, it's, what, about, it's a what, about the giant, what about the giant cream puff game at the new place? I have no, 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 no idea what a Bahama Mama is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's a sausage at a restaurant in Columbus. It's a yeah. schnitzel. Cor it's, not, it's not a schnitzel. No, it's not. It's not a schnitzel, a schnitzel. at all. No. What do they call sausage? I don't know. I, I don't know. Verst. Yeah. Rot. A verst. Verst. It's a verst. This is just the verst. All right. So we got this guy on here. So this is our first Nazi guest. Would you uh, do a little <laughs> Sig Heil for us? or? That might actually get me into trouble with the law. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. They can't do that in Germany. We got, the, right. see, in America, we got something called freedom, so I can Sieg freedom Heil all day. Freedom of speech. Heil! Okay. Heil Hitler! I could do it. We all know you were... It's no big deal for me. Well, yeah, because you actually believe it, Because we got freedom, bitch! The national socialist. Freedom of DJ. fucking speech and shit. Anyway, let's watch your video. <laughs> there is a guy... On YouTube. God, you're so ugly, TJ. He's called the Crowd and T. That's our guest. I come from a land gone under. Can't you hear? Can't you hear the thunder? I like your rendition of you that. You better by the run. Way. You better take cover. Thank I you. I like it too. I'm honestly surprised that you replied to me. <coughs> anyway, let's get into this. Let's uh, let's just skip to the part where he talks about me, huh? Amen. I think that'd probably be better for us. Yep. Yeah, guess what? Even though I attacked you in this video, I also attacked other people and added information into it <laughs> in an effort to make a point. Yeah. If I ain't hearing my name, I ain't giving a shit. Yeah, I, I can guarantee... Uh, TJ, did you even watch the whole video? Uh, or were you just looking for parts of it? No, I watched, I watched the whole uh, thing. He watched the whole thing. I gave the whole thing a, a watch. Me through. and him watched the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Scotty I mean, was there. Scotty okay. is, as Scotty is my witness. I did. I watched the whole thing. It's the only way I believe it. But yeah, I was more interested in the parts about me than anything else. I know. You know that. I don't know, yeah. dude. Like, the, the, the video did, like, the first part of the video did have a very, like, distinct opening minutes at the annual meeting of the Royal Arts Society tone to them. Like, it was kind of, it plodded That a is bit. merely the way I speak, unfortunately. <laughs> There's nothing I, like, I can do about that. I like, I, I, Paul, why are you being so mean? I like, I like his video. I like the fucking part. I mean, like, oh, I didn't see I'm about to mean. say, I'm about to say uh, in a minute here that I agreed with those parts. That's why I didn't argue with him, because, like, I don't feel the need to argue with shit I agree with. And well, you did later point. say. Now, I will say. So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to address a video, I can't address the side points. I got to address the main point. I mean, I did. Well, I said I agree with it. No, 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 no. That is not what I'm saying. But you have to agree that this is probably what caused a lot of confusion. Sure. 
A lot of people accused you of intentionally sidestepping the initial part of the video. Yeah, but I don't understand that given the part you're just about to play here. In fairness, that much of your video is correct. When you talk about the danger Islam poses to your country by refusing to integrate and adopt the pluralistic values of the West. Which is what the video was mainly about. True. But let's get to that later. So, okay. uh, all right, you sauerkraut. You get it? Sauerkraut? Yeah. Take <laughs> your fucking feels out of the equation for a minute. Take your politics out of the equation and look at this shit objectively. How many Europeans <laughs> died in car crashes in 2015? Mm -hmm. How dare you speed me up? You speed yourself up. How right? dare you, sir? How dare you? Western Europe in 2015, the grand total of people killed in terrorists. Yeah. I think we should do that from now on to TJ. You yeah, just make everything I yeah. Show's over. Bye. It's like, wow, TJ's so much better I, you now. You know, I had, a, I had a question for you before we get any further. Uh, yes. where, where did you get the idea that we live in a cornfield? Because that, that was a part of your video that I laughed the hardest at. It is kind of a cliche in a certain way. That anything that lives between the coastlines in the United States is pretty much cornfields and cows. I would say that's mostly accurate. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we don't, we don't live in a cornfield. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was born in a cornfield, but... Were you really? No, uh -oh. I was not. Why did you even believe that? I was born in California. <laughs> I was born at a hospital in Pasadena, California. Because it sounded so... You know, strange <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. I, I got gotcha. you. Tax was. Did you take offense? No, 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 not at all. I just thought it. I mean, like, I don't know. It, I, I don't know. I, I didn't did. know if you actually had done research and you were like, looks like it's in a cornfield, or if you, or or if you were just assuming. No, I, I took. Honestly, didn't did. I just said it. Right, I took say? massive offense. He, he I was so pissed. He also called us hillbillies, which I. Seriously, I, I don't know if you've ever been to the U.S. before, but if someone met me, uh, the last thing they would describe me as is a hillbilly. I don't know, Ben. You are kind of hillbilly. Shut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, you fucking hillbilly. Go make some, <laughs> go make make some, some moonshine. moonshine from the still, yeah. bitch. I, I think to bridge the gap, it's kind of like the way, you know, when we think of Germany, we instantly think of some guy in Lederhosen slapping his shoes with a tuba playing and like, yeah. I guess I, like I'm fat different. people eating sausage and with big mugs of beer go and you know, like it's our stereotype and it's also kind of true. Um, it's not yeah, true. There's no way of avoiding these kinds of things. <laughs> there you go. We are perfectly honest. It is just kind of sure. weird to be living in the place that the rest of the world just disregards as the corn, the cornfields. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, that's the cornfield, and it's kind of true. I just, I still yeah, just see, see York and LA. I still just see the Nazis when I think of Germany. Like someone says Germany instantly, I just see Hitler and like a bunch of people marching in lockstep in the streets. Oh, I've forgiven. I've I'm forgiven a, I'm our a, German yeah. brothers for their for their. I German mean, I have too. I mean, I, we've had we've had <laughs> we've had Germans uh, at our meetups and stuff. Like when we went to Amsterdam and um, and the um, you know. And I've been to Germany. Oh, they were definitely all Nazis too, of course. You were, you I did it to them, though. I, I fucking got you know, drunk and I fucking started grabbing the German people. I'm like, you're fucking Nazi. Give me a hug. It's, it's kind of weird because the parts of Germany I went to was all countryside. So, yeah. like, I could eat... Uh, I was in like like the Rhine River area and then like the Black Forest area, like very touristy. Yeah, to, to be perfectly honest, I live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere in Bavaria, just <laughs> in the middle of the countryside, and I grew up on a farm. So, 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 so the next time you make a video about him, TJ, make sure he you mention that he lives in the middle of nowhere. Bumfuck Bavaria. <laughs> He's a Bavaria has hillbilly. A whole different note to me as an american now 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 i now i'm thinking of plump little boys that <laughs> steal chocolate from the drawer yes i don't I do know actually, why i do actually have lederhosen but i'm not going to show them <laughs> oh tragic Bavarian. You let's, naughty let's, let's, little Bavarian boy, you. Quit stealing get, the chocolate. Yeah, when, when, when you had just come on with us, we were talking about the Hofbrau house that we have here. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The Hofbrau house. Yeah. Yeah. What, is that kind of like a, a brewery where you Yeah, live? exactly. Yeah, yeah German so lots of style. German immigrants living there. Yes, we have a whole area of our city called the German Village. And it's uh, it was made in the early 1900s. Everything's made out of brick there. So we have Oktoberfest and all kinds of other crap. 
Yep. Yes. All exactly. that stupid German They do shit. it all. They do it all here. You guys make good sausages. What's the secret ingredient? Is it Jews? You can tell <laughs> me if it's Jews. Drum roll, please. Oh, no. 150. That's it. <clears throat> people. Yeah. More people die in my country every year from choking on their food. That's 4,000. Imagine someone standing in court before a judge being accused of murdering someone. And his defense is... But why are you talking on and on about that murder I committed when the murderer you sentenced last week murdered two more people than me? Seems like a You're fair also point. comparing apples and oranges. What's wrong with that? They're both fruit. They're both round. There's lots of basis of comparison between then, apples and then oranges. Let's say comparing apples with stones. Apples with stones? Stones yeah. could be round two like apples as well. Completely <laughs> different thing. But not Maybe. exactly edible. I don't see, but I mean, like, I, I think, you know, you're comparing them as causes of death. So, I mean, terrorism is a cause of death. Sure. Choking, you know, it can be a cause of death. Car crashes can be a cause of death. Influenza can be a cause of death. The point I'm making is that you're way less likely to be killed by a terrorist than any of those other things yeah, that like, most of us are not scared of. Because when you go out in public, obviously, you're rolling the dice every time that something could happen. There could sure. be a terrorist attack. There, you could does die. That alleviate, does that alleviate concern? No. But don't you think that it's better to handle things with, like, a cold clinical disposition? Like, we don't freak out that so many people still die in car crashes. I we, do. It, it, I do believe we that. Acknowledge it, we acknowledge it as a problem, but, you know, we work to solve it. We try to improve safety standards. We're trying to get self-driving vehicles out there and stuff. Uh, as far as yeah, influenza, you're, you're I mean, doctors carrying, are continuously yes. battling these things. I mean, like, all I'm saying is that we take preventative measures against those things without being terrified of them. At least most of us aren't. Yet you're still comparing a crime with an accident, essentially. Sure. You see, when, it, when London was bombed, the attitude back then was still in the UK. Well, keep carry on. You do, you have all seen the poster, probably. Yeah. Yes, of course. But of course, and a million parodies time, of it. Sure. Yeah. Still, at the same time, the attitude <coughs> was as well. We are going to fight them. Sure. And what's wrong? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I have no objection to that. I'm just saying, don't make the same mistakes that America made after we were attacked by fucking terrorists. Where. You know, we become, the U.S. is still in Afghanistan. Yeah, we become they destabilized Iraq. I mean, we, that they the pretty much we become so video. scared and irrational that we fucking start making bad decisions. I'm sorry, you go ahead. What what makes you think that is is only about terrorism? What I'm talking about? Because well, no, I, I mean it wasn't. The, I was just out in, laid it out in my video that the sure. main issue that we have here is mainly the fact that the Islamic communities. Refuse okay. to be part of society, but the Refuse. yeah, sure. but the, the okay, but but yeah. the, pro the the problem is the tweet that you responded to was specifically talking about terrorism. So when you hold that up as an example of like, look at this stupid tweet he made, that was about terrorism. So you changed the subject by bringing that up. Yes, the tweet you made was about terrorism. I'll concede That's that, and I still believe the comparison is not valid. Why not? Like I said before, it is comparing apples with oranges because it is two completely different things. Well, that's the an point of an analogy. An analogy, you take two different life. things and find commonalities between them and compare them on that basis. What if I was the to commonality get... between death by accident and death by being ripped, you die. You just, you just said it. You just you said die. it. Death and yeah. death. You death. Die. That's the commonality. Die. Yes, that's so... the one and single commonality. But there are so many ways <laughs> to die. Sure. It's kind of irrelevant. It's like zooming out and well, saying, the, oh, but look, the whole, in the end, the, we're just all atoms. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is, the only point that I'm making with that tweet is just, look how much less likely you are to die from this than you are from all of these other things. Look how remote the possibility is of dying from an act of terrorism compared to so many common, everyday, mundane ways you could die. So you were addressing so, fear. Yes, I was talking about the subject of fear. And I mean, I, I think that, you know, if you look at terrorism, I mean, terrorism, that's a, psych a psychological warfare strategy. It's saying, you know, it, they're not necessarily going after targets of, of strategic import, like we're going to uh, stop a supply yeah, line on or something like they that. Look at, they look for soft targets now. Yeah, they're looking for something that they can do to strike fear into the population of a country or, you know, to, 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 to something they yeah, perceive look, as an enemy. They, they had people at, at the concert in Paris. I mean, that's a perfect example. People out having fun. And it's like, we're going to walk in there and blow a bunch of them away. And then we're going to bomb a, a, a soccer uh, event. You know, it's like 
they want to strike fear into the hearts of people. It's, it's clear. I mean, they're, they're not choosing to, let's attack a military base. They're not choosing to attack um, a military installation. In, in, that case, in that case, why not just simply say, don't be scared, don't lose your head, stay rational? Why make the comparison with accidents? Uh... Be, I don't know. Because I mean, it, I, did, I didn't. Case, at the it, time I made it, I didn't realize it was going to be so controversial because it seems to me like a lot of people say, say, well, you can't compare them because this is an accident and this is intentional. But I'm not talking. But we're not talking. We're not comparing them in terms of like morality or something. We're comparing them in terms of like the fear response we have. To them. Yeah, unless it's dr I guess like drunk driving. Yeah, deaths. a lot of people don't stand That's in terror like of like heart decision. disease, even though. It's also a bit of an invalid comparison, drunk driving deaths. <coughs> terrorism is terrorism. You know, sure, it's, sure. there's an ideological motivation behind it. Yeah, I mean, oh, of it's not just a crime. There's an ideological motivation behind doing it. It's, it's also better organized. You see, um, when I say crime, you know, robbing a bank and murdering a guard at that bank, mm -hmm. the motive behind that is mainly probably greed. Whilst when I plant a bomb in a train station that goes off and rips people to shreds in the name of Allah, there's a clear ideological motivation behind it. Sure. I mean, no one's denying that. No, why would you? <laughs> Besides, the big difference between a death by car accident, for example, if I make, and if I may being ripped... To run, yeah, sure. Yeah, go uh, ahead. I'm no longer screen sharing, just to say. Oh, so. oh okay. Sorry. We'll uh, we'll get we'll fix that right away. Um, yeah. Wonder why that happened. <clears throat> I don't know. If Skype you wish can be I a fickle mistress. Back. No, no, that's all right. We can. No, we can we'll, this we'll get quick. it fixed. Yeah, it's the same for me too. It just kind of died at some point. Okay. I imagined it would. We will go ahead and fix that for you guys real quick, so you can see what we're looking at. It seems to me you guys might be talking past each other a little bit. Like TJ was talking about this uh, irrational fear of terrorism that seems to be at the forefront of a lot of the speech that we hear. Um, and you're more talking about the cultural drift of Islam. You're talking about this massive influx of people that don't share the values of your country and your countrymen. Yes. And if I may add to that, a lot of people seem to believe that this is some kind of personal thing almost i i've seen the word drama and civil war creep up a lot on twitter etc it's merely a disagreement as far as i see it sure right the answer the answer can't be to demonize the people it'll never work um and that's the problem uh, that i have with a lot of well a, a lot of the a lot of the critique that i that i see now is like if you say something as simple as like there's a Muslim person that I know that's good, you're an, you're an Islam apologist. You're just dismissed outright immediately. Like being Muslim is the worst thing in the world. We need to call, call the religion what it is. Well, that is not exactly the climate I am seeing. The climate I am seeing is as soon as you point out something that is completely going wrong in the Islamic community, people call you a racist or all sorts of horrible things. Right. Well, we have that too. I'm talking about specifically this kind of online Twitter environment that you're working in. Um, Where the, am I working? You mean and, and anytime you state any opinion? Yeah, anytime you state any opinion online, you're going to hear the antithesis spit back at you, of course. Look, um, three months ago, a man in Germany was sentenced, uh, was dragged before a judge and told that if he ever posted a hateful comment directed at a Arab immigrant news reporter again, he would have to pay a two hundred and fifty thousand euro fine. Now, in all fairness, I don't know what the comment was. But that is kind of the environment that we are in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the United States, but the environment here in Europe, especially in Germany, mainly is say anything bad about the religion of peace and you're in trouble. Oh, yeah, I mean, here it's, it's totally different because, I mean, like, we have a major presidential candidate who has no compunctions about saying whatever he wants. You know, uh, kind of on the same subject, recently a fan of Dusty Smith uh, in Singapore is having criminal charges brought against him. Yeah, he's saying, a, wow. Amos Yee, I believe yep. his name is. Yeah, he's been in he was already in jail for 52 days for insulting that, Christianity. That happened to I you, too, it, TJ. I find it funny that that is the end of the video that you brought up, and I just, um, I just dismissed the end of your video as a straw man. I believe you assume that I somehow, just because I am from here, 
mm. believe in regulating speech. I absolutely don't. I think it's fucking shameful that we have these strict hate speech laws. I do too. I, yeah. I do to a certain degree still wonder where you get this assumption from. Uh, I think it was just because you you characterized me as soft on Islam, and I felt like we agreed on everything, so I figured the only things you could possibly take issue with are those two stances I described at the end. Um, because, you know, I don't think I have been weak on Islam. I think I've been just as happy to criticize Islam as Christianity. It's just I don't have as much exposure to it. Mm -hmm. So I, when, I, when, you're say, when you're characterizing me as, oh, he's weak on Islam, I, say, I, you know, I immediately think, well, he must be one of the, these people in this camp who thinks this and this and this. So I'm sorry, I made a bad assumption there. But um, I, think if you watch, I think if you watch the way that I phrased it, even then I was kind of tentative. Like, I, I wasn't sure if that was what you believed because I didn't see you explicitly say that in your video, but I kind of assumed that must be it. Um, and later on, I realized when I watched this response, actually, that I was mistaken about that. And I was like, oh, I don't think we really even disagree on the subject of Islam at all. My main issues of contention with your video were your characterization of Americans as not being qualified to speak out on these issues because we've dealt with yes. radical Islam. Well, well, we've there, also there is dealt. A difference. There is a I know. Difference Hold on. Let me let me address that difference though. Let me address that difference because I already know what you're going to say you're going to talk about how your video is about the encroachment yeah, of Islam. Yeah. And, and, but we face that shit too. We face that with uh, Mexico. The, the same rhetoric of oh these Mexican immigrants they come here they don't adapt to our culture they fucking form these little enclaves and they commit crimes they do all this stuff i mean this, donald trump is running on this shit well, so well, i mean mexico is a western culture sure it is latin inherently i mean i've met a few mexicans there to me they're not that much different than spaniards sure there's a big difference between immigration from a culture that is at least somewhat similar to yours and immigration from a culture that is completely different not just completely I mean, different. If you talk to a lot of conservative Americans, they feel the way that way about Mexicans, though. Yeah, like, I, well, oh, yeah, the, I don't. the main Mark? difference the main difference between Mexicans and Spaniards is most Mexicans also have native ancestry too. But more importantly, the the main difference between Mexicans and your Arab Pakistani immigrant is that the Pakistani immigrant comes from a country where a third of the male population believe that raping young boys is okay. Yeah, I mean that um, is a significant difference. Sure. It yeah, I mean it's it's undeniably, undeniably. I mean, yeah, I mean we 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 look at the opinion polls that come out of like Muslim countries and even Muslims in Western countries, and the results are pretty abysmal, extremely discouraging when it comes to almost every subject matter. I mean, you could find some countries where the Muslims are pretty moderate. It's not like this is a universal problem to all of Islam, and I hate that characterization, but. There's definitely a very troubling number of Muslims who believe some pretty scary things, like death for apostasy. There are instances where suicide bombing is okay, and you know that uh, the, these people are martyrs who will go to heaven. You know, there's all we, we always see that those statistics. I've not seen the yes. boy rape statistic. Of course, we see countries yes, like Saudi is, Arabia and Pakistan. What we are getting here. That is the main problem we are having. There is. <laughs> There's a lot of people who address Islam itself, the theology. There's a lot of people who address uh, the implications of terrorism. But few are willing to address the implications of culture itself, of society itself, and of the impact of importing this. So what do you think, uh, what do you think the solution is? I have no fucking clue. I mean, I, we're hardly talking about it. This is the problem. This is the thing. This it's is... starting to talk about it. <clears throat> Consider this. Um, shortly after the Paris test tax, this is something where I don't know what exactly to think about it. The Austrian parliament decided to um, uh, pass a bill that criminalizes the financing of religious institutions in Austria from abroad, meaning that all Saudi Arabian mosques and mosques financed by Saudi Arabia were shut down. And this was done mainly because, believe it or not, every time a bomb goes off, and I'm not just talking about Europe, I'm talking about the world, every time a fucking bomb goes off, you will find Saudi money. And we know from intelligence reports that the Saudis, rich Saudis, rich Qataris, rich Kuwaitis, actively financed Islamist communities in Europe. 
And the sad so thing is that my con- my country that? still my still co- my country still uh, considers Saudi Arabia an ally yeah, but for I some mean, reason. Weren't, weren't that, that's the, for, that's for political reasons. Weren't obviously, the, weren't the nine eleven hijackers predominantly Saudi? Yes, they were. Yeah. yeah. Saudi Arabia is like the major oh, exporter dude, of it's terrorism. A ter- it's a terrible country. Well, it's also where Mecca is. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the, pro- the, the problem, as I see it, is that people are afraid because I don't believe for a second that Kraut T hasn't thought about some solutions to this. Doesn't what have do any mean, idea. Re- like, like I, I think people are okay, afraid me- to talk about the solutions because they're afraid that the solutions will offend the sensibilities of everybody around them. Because Please, cultural drift, you don't. Cultural drift doesn't just stop, right? So what are your what are your <coughs> big blunt tools? War, right? Well, you've got to go to war. Doing with these... right now. No, 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 no. We are already <laughs> at war, by the way, with a certain Islamic state. Uh, what Not do enough. I do? I point out statistics. I at least talk about the realities, and well, for example, one thing I really like to do is talk with uh, talk to ex-Muslims, including introverted smiles, who I believe you covered here, including. Uh, Focus Breaker Beeb, I don't know if you know him, he's a Saudi Arabian ex-Muslim YouTuber, and various other peoples. I believe that attacking ideas within these communities is an important aspect of this, because if you take a look at the ex-Muslim YouTube community, it's a very small community right now. Um, They face attacks that you possibly couldn't even imagine. They, for example, face uh, false DMCAs, not with the intent to take the videos down, but with the intent to get their private addresses and names. And that's one aspect that I believe, one road that I believe should be walked down, which is furthering the humanistic ex-Muslim communities, uh, at least from my perspective as an atheist, that is a good route, route to take. And of course, just facing reality pointing out the statistics, pointing out what is going on, talking about it openly in an open forum, which is currently not being done, unfortunately. I, gu- I, I guess it's not a strange idea to me that you're, it, this has been happening in Europe for a very long time. And I'm not even from Europe. I know, where, Europe, you're, and I'm I know not, I'm where not... your line of reasoning comes from, because the far right and the extreme far right in Europe is a completely different and more dangerous beast than the right in the United States. And it has been on the rise here, very slowly creeping up in the past few years. And the main reason for it is, okay, there's lots of reasons, but one of the main reasons is nobody is willing to openly talk about the problems that come from importing aspects of an Islamic society to Europe. Well, I mean, it's the same thing that happens with any black market. It's, you know, you prohibit something, it's going to go underground. And that goes for ideas, too. You know, if you start making it impossible for people to actually have a real conversation about um, Islam yes, and the exactly. effect it's having on society, I mean, you push people under You push people also, into the arms of, of a far right leaning group. To legitimize fanatics. Yeah. In those circumstances. I mean, I agree right. with that. But what, what are the, like, I'm a very solution oriented person. What do you do? Because just, I, I know talking about it is important. But a lot of people are talking about it now. Like I, I, I don't, and and nothing's happening. It's still, it's still ha- like this. This cultural drift, one culture and another culture clashing, has happened over and over and over throughout our history. Of course. And the end result is always like war or some mass expulsion of people, um, some some forced uh, immigration. Like, is it really you- that much about culture? Or is it more about values? It's a it's a culture thing. Okay, you're, then... you're a member of a culture. Okay, your culture thinks that <coughs> raping little boys is abhorrent in every fucking uh, concept. And this other, you pointed it out yourself to point out the difference between Mexicans and Muslims. This culture, it, like you, you can't say these people are wrong because a third of them. They're raised in a culture where that's the truth. If you were raised in that culture, there's a fucking 25% chance okay. that you'd be liking I, 
I also believe, no, 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 it has a lot to do with values as well, because I also believe in the freedom of expression. I believe sure. in the change of power through democratic means. That these values are not represented within the Middle East. They're not represented anywhere within the Islamic world. But it's those the values. Only <coughs> it's those values that they're exploiting, right? <coughs> yeah, that's, that's like the catch twenty two for sure. Give us give us your tired, your poor, your hungry, your 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 tempest tossed, yearning to breathe free. Give us everybody. That's our and, and that's a great way to be. But it's because of that that what's happening in your country and Europe uh, at large is happening. So you're going to have I to change I something believe, fundamental about the democratic process. I don't believe that self-censorship and refusing to openly talk about something on an open platform is part of the set of values that we associate with a free and open society. I agree. And the self censorship but you, but you still, is but you still what have is... the problem. You still have the problem of the institutions upon which the governments that your area is based on are allowing what, what this do, mass diaspora of uh, Islamic. It, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's uh, it's the way that you're. It's what you're defending that allows this cultural drift to happen. No, not necessarily. We could have at least our chancellor could have just as well decided. No, we won't have open borders. Right, but wouldn't that change the nature of this open democratic society? The thing about Muslim immigration into Europe from country to country, it always happens on a different basis. We here in Germany during the 70s and 60s, we had more jobs than people. And instead of outsourcing our industry abroad, we decided to import uh, several hundred thousand Turks. Said they would only work here temporarily and... Yeah, of course, it was a really stupid idea because the politicians back then said, yes, they will be going home soon. Of course, Turkey back then was a brutal and disgusting military dictatorship. So, of course, these people did not go home. In France, you had the first Muslim immigration wave that came from um, Algerian veterans who fought in the Free French Army against <laughs> the Nazis. Then you had another immigration wave coming um, after the collapse of the colonial regime. In Algeria, it's it's always different from country to country. It's not necessarily value bound. It is often bound to policies, and the yeah. current immigration wave comes due to a stupid policy, which is open borders. So, yeah, it so also it also comes for, because of uh, the U.S. and uh, well, yeah, Russia the, uh, fucking having their proxy well, wars the in the Middle East. Yeah. I mean, you know, destabilizing that region, uh, fucking sending people packing for. You know, all kinds of different destinations across, you know, Europe and well, I, uh, some to America. I could draw that line back, back further and further and could say, oh, end sure. up saying in the end that it's due to the Sykes-Picot agreement. I mean, that, what would be the point of defining this further back, taking a wider lens, a wider lens and an even wider lens? I mean, so sure. You could probably you could probably trace it back to like the, the I mean, you know, if causal chain, you could probably chase it back to the first fucking yeah. life on Earth, or you know, the Big what, Bang. What, even what really matters, what really matters, is what do we do now? I mean, I exactly. we, well, that's we what now I'm have, trying to find out. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, so I think when you when, when million, you when you look at the fact that we we use like the Middle East as uh, you know our pawns in some epic chess game, you know, I think maybe those yeah. policies should be stopped. Since they lead to stuff like this, they lead yeah, to a, mil a fucking millions of spilling refugees. over of people into, you know, uh, countries that they're really not, they don't share the values of the countries they're spilling over into. And that okay, creates okay, the, all these problems well, for you. Do, you. do you really believe that the Islamic world will become less barbaric? I mean, uh, do you believe that there will be less problems? No. I yeah, mean, well, well, I, I, th they're, they're, I think that they'll be they'll be dealing more with their own problems and less fucking with us. Really? I think. Okay. There okay. Are, um, is, in the, in the wait, 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 Paul. In the Philippines, there have been over one hundred Islamic terrorist attacks over the past ten years. The mm. Philippines themselves have no intervention policy anywhere in the world. The Philippines yeah. themselves were a um, 
Spanish colony for 300 years, then an American protectorate for 50 years, then occupied by Imperial Japan, and then ruled by a brutal military dictatorship. For it sounds like, years. I mean, I mean, you're, when you're describing when you're describing their history, it kind of sounds like everyone struggled for control of this place at one point or another. So it's really not surprising. But, um, uh, but why Islamic terrorism then there? Why, you know, you have Islamic because, terrorism Because, well, I mean, the, the goal of so many uh, Islamists is to spread Islam yeah, to the, you know, dominate the entire yes, world with Islam. Exactly. So but the thing, the, the thing is that their changes, what will change there? Well, they're, the, because they're still, the they're still struggling to conquer the Muslim world, to get that under one banner. I mean, that's not even close to happening yet. The Philippines yet. is at the Pacific coast. It's south of Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not necessarily yeah. part of the Muslim world. Right. Well, but a lot of Muslims live in the Asian world. I mean, Indonesia, Pakistan, I mean, there's a lot of Muslims. Yeah, I mean, all it's over not like the, the Muslims are just confined to the Middle East. I mean, they're, they're yeah. in India and, you know, they're all over Asia and shit, too. Um, but, I mean, the thing about it, the Islamists, the people who want to spread this shit everywhere, I mean, like ISIS. You know, Americans, or I don't know, I don't know how Germans feel about ISIS, but you know, Americans, they sit here shaking their boots. ISIS is coming. ISIS is coming. Like ISIS has its hands full trying to keep what little territory it fucking has. They ain't worried about we're gonna come to America and, and just you know, cause havoc there. I mean, maybe they they will eventually, but they haven't done well, it so ISIS far. ISIS was already here last November in Paris. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But they, but what I'm saying is, like, they not, they mostly have their hands full doing what they're doing. I mean, they might have some sleeper cells here and there doing shit, but it hasn't really you, become you, you the know, major you, issue. Like, and I mean, like, Al Qaeda, for instance. Like, we had this fucking major attack on our fucking um, soil. Three thousand uh, people dead. Another thousand from uh, get cancer from the toxic shit released. Uh, tons of people injured, global economy, yeah, fucking Delta major blow, all the things that happened with 9-11. That was Al-Qaeda that did that. Um, now, we have Hillary Clinton, who's running for president, who is endorsed by uh, General Petraeus, who wants to arm Al-Qaeda because they, we're, they're going to help us fight Assad. You know, I mean, don't you think that those sorts of policies are fucked up? Don't you think that we should stop pumping money and resources and training into this region? Don't you think that is part of the problem? Stop fucking with it in general I is what I'm trying to get out. There are, I do believe there, it is part of a problem, but pulling out of it alone will not help solve it. Well, there there's probably tons, not any one thing you could do alone. No, there's not one action it. that's going to magically there solve this. There's tons of examples Which where, our fucking, where our Western meddling has caused fucking countries to collapse and shit. If you look at pictures from Iran back in the 70s, it looked like fucking Detroit. Like there were ladies no, wearing no, no, dresses. No, 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 no. <coughs> Tehran looked like Detroit. Well, whatever. The rest did not. The they're, Ayatollahs they're, did not. Sure, sure, sure. But that, Don't forget that, that the Iranian revolution... Don't we, forget that we, the Iranian revolution was a secular revolution first, which was <coughs> then co-opted when the Ayatollah returned. Don't forget course. that between 1980 and 1983, up to 30,000 people were executed for being left-wing secular Democrats and what else. Sure. Don't forget that. This was no, not due to West. These 50,000 people were not executed by Western interventionists. They were executed by the Ayatollah. And no of one, but that's always no the one is dictatorship. Come on, no one is saying that the genesis of all Islamic terrorism or all the fucking terrible elements of Islam are because of Western intervention. I'm just saying, like, don't you think we exacerbate it? For like, for instance, when we see, oh, Russia is fucking around in Afghanistan. Let's arm and give training to these people. This guy seems good. Or Osama bin Laden. Uh, I think he'll help us out. What about that guy Saddam? Actually, Should arm actually, him too. You didn't give. You didn't give weapons weapons to the Taliban, you gave weapons to Sia al-Haq, the then dictator of Pakistan, who set up the ISI, who themselves set up and armed the Taliban. 
the Taliban is mainly it's a creation still, of Pakistan. Well, that's how it always works. They have, yeah, I mean, they have we, U.S. Special Forces. The U.S. always countries. does everything through proxy. Yeah, though. We but, never fucking have our fingerprints right on the fucking yeah, weapon they're, they're that we not hand to the directly, fucking terrorists. Yeah, they're not going to directly hand weapons to people who might be the enemies of the United States just because they're fighting enemies, you know, our major enemies at the time. And we sold Why weapons. Why would they do that? That's we sure. gave, we gave training. We I gave agree. training to bin Laden. We fucking gave weapons to Saddam. I mean, all what these people who are enemies idea. at some point were there. Yeah. It was an extremely stupid idea to give weapons to Sir al haq but the ground ideology behind all of this still remains the same. You're right. You're right about that. There's no denying that. I'm just saying, like, why would we help any of these extremist fucking Muslim groups against each other? Why would we give any of them training or weapons? And the answer is because and, we're trying to win a fucking is, proxy war relevant? with Russia. It's extremely relevant. relevant. It's extremely relevant because it caused the very problem you're complaining about. It caused this spillover. Don't you think the destabilization of Iraq agree, and Syria... we just agree that the ideology underlying all of this was still the main cause of it? Yes, but the, the thing that pushed that ideology that into your region of the world... You, when Syria has really a massive believe, drought... Mm -hmm. Do you really believe that it is our foreign policy alone, considering that there have been... No, not alone. No one said that. Not alone, no. ...Islamic terrorist attacks in Kenya, Uganda... No, of course not. Devoir, ...Burkina Faso... Those Tanzania, are all places with Muslim populations. India, Cambodia, Thailand, yeah. China... Look, the There's no, no, no one, no one saying that Western our U.S. foreign policy alone. I'm not saying countries they're Western countries. Intervene. No, but those are, those are all countries that, that have Western Turkey populations. Means. And look, even in America, where we have mu Muslim populations, I mean, there's Muslim attacks here. Like I pointed out in the video, Fort Hood, you know. Um, San Bernardino. San Bernardino, uh, the Boston Marathon bombings. The, you know, the, the, some of these people are raised in the U.S., and then they just get radicalized because they're already Islamic. They fucking can find this material online easily enough. We've had converts too, non-Muslim converts oh, yeah. that ran away. Yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew a fucking. Yes, uh, on, when on, I was a kid, I knew a white. I knew this white kid who was named Yusuf. Well, his name wasn't actually Yusuf, but he adopted the name Yusuf, and he had Osama bin Laden in his like forum as his forum signature. Like, yeah, oh, bin Laden's right. And this was a little white kid, you know. So, are we really? Uh, this are can we really happen. gonna? Are we really going to just gloss over and ignore the effect that fucking firing 10 trillion tons of bombs into a fucking country <laughs> has? Like, we're, 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 we're trying to... Da oh, look, look. American, intervention uh, uh, American interventionalism is what it is, but let's just set it over to the side here. It's the culture. It's the culture. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Islam is bad. We all agree. Nobody in here likes Islam. Nobody in here thinks it's a good fight. Let, let's draw that line. Yeah. You don't have to convince us We all realize it's a pretty Islam shitty operating bad. system, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody here bases their life on Islam or wood <laughs> because it's a fucking stupid idea. Okay, yes. we all agree. Yes. Are we really going to just gloss over our role in dropping no. tons of, and destabilize it? Like, why do you think these young poor people flock to these big rebel groups? Because a lot of them know somebody that's been blown up by an American <laughs> bomb. A lot of them know somebody that's been shot by an by a by a European sniper. I would look. I would really enjoy to see that survey, to be honest, because as far as I know, a lot of the recruits who went to ISIS are highly educated, especially those in Europe. You have doctors and lawyers joining ISIS. When did I say that they were uneducated? A doctor is usually also well paid. Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't see the point. Anyway, the I, point I, is I, that you that you are making this overarching statement of, oh look, these are all <laughs> poor, small, disenfranchised kids who go and join ISIS. Well, they could be rich, disenfranchised have, kids that join ISIS too. I when mean, you have, for example, the fact that eighty percent of all ISIS recruits coming from Canada went to the same school. Oh, wait a minute. What was it again? Eighty percent of all female ISIS recruits coming from Canada, went to the same school that was financed by Saudi Arabia. Right. And That's these not people, shocking at all. Everything came. So the, the ideology is the ground People joining structure. an ideology to exterminate Western culture, that has nothing to do with us dumping shit fuck tons of bombs all over the Muslim world. Nothing to do you, with not it. not me. Um, but well, sure. Okay, me. As an American. Yeah, Paul, that stop that. It is still not the main cause. Do you really believe that if you were to pull out 
the sectarian civil war between the Sunnis no. and the Shias would not end. Not now. You don't put Do the you believe? Back not on the now. Bottom. When? When? We fucked it now. You don't. We can't. When we does it end? We fucked it now. When, when does it end? It, it, it ends when, I, I mean, let's, let's, you talked about. And are uh, you really, it down are like you really that Adam. sure that you fucked it? Are you really that sure that you fucked it? We, we, we at least fucked it to an extent. Sunni and Shia We're at least a factor for, in it. Well, at least since the death of Muhammad. All right, since the death of Muhammad. Let me just, let's just fucking, yeah. okay, let's just put it this way. Like, let's imagine uh, the world is like a neighborhood and every fucking country is a house. You know, maybe you got some fucking neighbors down the way that are really shitty people. You know, and you say, man, these people fucking suck. I'm going to go burn their house down. And you go burn their house down, and then the next thing you know, they're attacking you all the time. I mean, yeah, they were... The, the fact that they were shitty people before you burn their house down might be true, but it's still because you burn their house down that they're coming to fucking attack you. Did you burn someone house, someone's house down? In a manner of speaking, yes. I think what we did to Iraq and I would, Syria... I, I would think, yes, in Iraq, I would agree, but not in Syria to a certain extent, because what is happening in Syria right now is mainly due to Iran and Saudi Arabia. Well, we finance a lot of that shit, too. Russia, Russia and the U.S. are what a if, well. Yeah, what if a plane hit, hit the fucking uh, Eiffel Tower and uh, fucking France decided that Germany was the source of that fucking plane and dropped a fucking dump load of bombs on your country? How would you feel about French people? How would you feel about French culture in general? We arbitrarily that's, involved that in an entire a, region of I'm, people. I'm terribly sorry. That's such a ridiculous hypothetical scenario. It doesn't even make any sense. What if the Germans flew a plane into the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> it's, um, it, is, it is a pretty ridiculous hypothetical, yes. but, it's, but it's kind of what happened, isn't it? Somebody... From some fucking country, flew planes into buildings here, and our response was to stomp a mud hole in the Middle people, East. Fifteen of whom were Saudis exactly. decided to fly, fly planes into skyscrapers exactly. in the name Where of we, God. When did we? When did we drop a bomb on fucking Saudi Arabia? Unfortunately, never. <laughs> it might be fortunate we never did. You don't know. There's no way of uh, looking I, into I, alternate I histories. I don't think we should. I don't, should, I don't think we should have dropped bombs yeah. on. Uh, I don't think we should have dropped bombs on anywhere because of that. Because yes, there was okay, no. I see that line of reasoning. You know, in Europe, yeah. we spent 200, 300 years of Catholics and Protestants butchering each other over the question of who was worshiping the right God, only to then realize that that was rather stupid. Maybe we should just watch the Shias and Sunnis butcher each other for three hundred years. Yeah, I, see that. I mean, maybe, maybe the, you know, I mean, like, maybe that's the, maybe that's what they gotta do. I mean, maybe at some point they fucking look around and say, you know what, this ain't working for us. Maybe we should change the way we do things. Isn't I mean, that also a horrible line of thinking itself, deterministic, saying it is their destiny to butcher each other. I mean, I'm not Wouldn't saying it's their destiny. I'm better. saying that maybe, maybe they'll fucking figure out that it's not worth it at some point. Just like uh, most Western societies have figured out, it's not worth it to slaughter each other in the streets over ideological disputes. Wouldn't it be far better to promote our values? Yeah, but I mean, like, how do we do that? They I mean, resent okay, the fuck out of our values. I, I, they I hate our values. The intervention is horrible. Yeah. Some of the inter the Iraq War, especially. I mean, there's a reason why we stayed out of it, why the French stayed out of it. Sure. Hey, look. It was a stupid fucking idea. It was stupidly being carried out. Uh, a fucking mess all throughout. And look, the but, Islamic world is pretty look, low on the pecking order of the fucking the Islamic... countries as far as think most things go. I mean, there's a tremendous resentment in a lot of these people as to their their the station of their countries in the world. You know, so I think there's always going to be that resentment, and that's why that's part of the reason why they resent American culture, even though they love it to some extent. I mean, you know, they, they love pirating our DVDs and watching our movies and shit, playing our video games, you, you know, yes, getting yes. on the Twitter and stuff like well, that when they can. But the, I hate the West, but I want to live in the West. And I mean, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. It's like they come, to, they come to countries like yours... And, uh, you know, they say, oh, my country's a shithole, I'm going to come to this other country, but they maintain the same attitudes that made their country a shithole to begin with. So all they're really doing is dragging, you know, you guys down. Yes.
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but so what's uh, the, the thing is, you know, we we can agree, we can agree that um, the Iraq War, for example, was a mess, a total mess. But if we're going to count together all reasons for why the Islamic world is such a shithole, you will have to add together everything. You'll have to add up every single incident. You will have to add, for example, the. Armenian genocide, which was not due to Western intervention, but was due sure. to a gang of disgusting fascist thugs slaughtering a segment of the population. <coughs> you will have to add in the genocide of the Chinese population in Indonesia. It's, you'll have to add in the Iran-Iraq war, which was started by Saddam Hussein. I know that Reagan pumped weapons into both sides, but it was started by Saddam Hussein. There are so many factors contributing to all of it. I don't deny that Western intervention on occasions does play a major role into things getting fucked up. But you can't disregard the rest. No, you I mean, we don't, we're not trying to. I don't think anyone thing. would. No one here is trying to discard all the things that are inherently messed up yeah. about Islam and Islamic We're not cultures. saying, uh, you know, these places were par was paradise on earth and suddenly the West came and then everything went to shit. That's ridiculous. I'm just saying that the stuff we've done has probably made things worse more often than better. I think we've exacerbated the existing problems is what I'm saying to you. But, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you're trying to victim blame or something like that. No, I'm just saying maybe we made some mistakes. <laughs> maybe, you know, there's a reason the why most people supported the Iraq war at the time and most people don't now. <laughs> most people now look back at that and say, you know, that was a pretty shit idea. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. But we were blinded because we were so pissed about 9-11. We were so hungry for vengeance. And that's why I caution against... The mentality, I mean, like, that's why I caution against becoming more emotionally invested against terrorism than car crashes, because that, I've seen the results. I've seen the result of saying, we need vengeance, we need to be angry about this. The result is, we make stupid decisions, we make well, bad mistakes, we make things worse. You do need to retaliate. You well, do sure, need you need to, to retaliate, retaliate, but it needs to be yes. cold, it needs to be calculated, it needs to be, yes. will this be effectual, not just, will we get our vengeance, because that's when you fucking make a stupid decision. And I don't think you're well, like that. You I think that you were. You I were think you're the kind of person. Into invading Iraq. You were deceived into invading Iraq. It was okay, not we, look, of, we, we it were not deceived. Not That's this. This is a new narrative. Okay, at the time of this fucking happening, ha uh, tons of the country was against this. Oh, you there mean, was mainstream press articles that said, "Look, the Bush administration's case is total bullshit." We have all these intelligence officers coming forward and saying this is not true. They just trotted out Colin Powell in front of the UN and said, "Look, there's definitely weapons of mass destruction. The people who, be the, the people who believed in this Iraq shit were the people who wanted to believe in it because they wanted to do it. There was plenty of information." out there that said no iraq does there's, not have there's, weapons dude, there's a lot of people now that want to nuke iran right now yeah we just fucking us we just made a fuck we just fucking signed a deal with fucking iran bombing them doesn't make any fucking sense if we bombed iran would that really make anything better do you think the middle east could be like oh they bombed us let's now we're scared of them like has that ever worked these are people willing to blow themselves up for fuck's sake the only thing they care about is fucking spreading their doctrine at the end of a fucking sword or a bomb at this point. But oh, I mean, this is all. Exactly this all goes back. How do you treat these people? And that's how what do it, you treat someone who only believes that they can spread their doctrine with the sword? I don't know. I really don't know. You bomb them. You round them up. Yeah, you round them up. Like as sorry as I'm to tell you. Bomb them all into the ground. Well, that that's true. That that this is kind of what I've been trying to get at the entire time. The final solution to all of this is war, right? You talked about open borders being the problem in, in the EU, correct? Well, it is the problem for me here. It is the problem here that we have. Okay, so Ger uh, uh, Bavaria, you're in Germany, right? Yes. Okay, so Germany closes its borders today. Problem has solved. Has been closed already. Has been closed already. No, okay. the problem hasn't been solved yet. You know, the problem is borders were opened. It was proclaimed we're going to take in a million Syrians. Most of the people who came turned out not to be Syrians. I would have accepted Syrian refugees, and I will say right off the bat, I wouldn't deport a single Syrian fleeing the conflict. But most of the people who came here were Pakistanis, Moroccans, Algerians, Afghans. So mass deportations. Now, how do you stop Muslims from getting into your country at the border? Do you stop every brown people, every brown person and frisk them? Like, what's the end result? I'm just asking. Well,
do, how have do you, you ever stop, traveled? How do you stop? Have you ever sur- traveled from one country into another? We have. Yes, I don't think he world. has. I, yes. I have. I've, cro- I've crossed. Yes. He's been to Mexico. Uh, then you know yeah, what a border Mexico. crossing is. Then you know what sure. a border crossing is. Yeah, but we also know how easy a border crossing is to subvert if you really want to get into another country. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard. Borders are big, long things. and Not you know, exactly, you... because the reason why the migrant route is closed is because um, the Austrians, who had all these people swamp through their country and had to themselves be forced into taking up a lot, decided, okay, we've had enough of the fucking Germans. Got together with the, made a kind of meeting, meet up with the Hungarians, the Croats, the Macedonians, mm. and the Slovaks and <coughs> Slovenians, and decided we're going to seal up the Bal- the Balkans. Right. What? Yeah, they imposed uh, border controls in those countries in Europe. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and when we traveled through Europe, most of the borders that we traveled through, we just well, that's by that's by a treaty. That's yeah, we just went Schengen on through. Era. That's yeah, the Schengen, Schengen yep. area. It's Correct. an agreement. Sure. But, you know, I mean, so, it was easy. It was nice. It was, it was yeah. easy peasy, man. Just go through. And, I liked it. Uh, I really liked uh, it. I, I thought it was convenient uh, as hell to just be able to just go from country to country and not have yes, to go but it through. Is, it is for Europeans. Sure. It is for countries. I wasn't a European. I was a fucking American tourist. Yeah, I could have been there to do some nefarious you had shit. A visa. Yeah, you, it, well, well, you I had, had a passport. We had a passport. With the U.S., yeah. you have visa free travel to, to the European Union. Okay, fine. But. Yeah. I thought it was convenient, is all I'm saying. I liked it. I like being able to just and, travel I'm, I'm freely. I'm sure ISIS found it quite convenient as well when they smuggled people in. Open borders in Europe are only for Europeans and people who have the agreement to travel in Europe. Sure. True. Right. So throw the wall up. Don't let anybody in. What do you do with well, the people the that are there? The wall is up. <laughs> okay, the wall is up. What do you do with the question? What do you do with the people that are there? Deport them, That's right? That's a very good I mean, question. Let's, after, let's be honest. After the, you, you after the wall. After the Cologne incident, most of the people arrested in connections to the sexual assaults turned out to be Moroccans and Algerians. Okay. And one interesting thing that came out of the entire mess was that it turns out Morocco is not cooperating with German authorities and deportations. Not surprising. Then it's, yeah. it's the German government. They problem. don't want them back either. Yeah, they don't want to spend the money on them. That's pretty obvious. Well, we paved for them. We would <clears throat> pay for the deportations. They just don't want them back. They just don't want them back, it seems. We're not cooperating because it turned out that a lot of the Moroccans who came here were thugs. Criminals. Yeah. I mean, but that's like the same thing we. I mean, like that's the same thing we hear here in that America does happen about here too, yeah. fucking Central American countries. Yeah, I mean, like all these people who are just like thugs and criminals coming here and shit. The comparison. Uh, th- the that's comparison where- really is stark because I'm from. A place that's like that. I'm from an area in California where there are tons of migrant workers, and the attitudes no. that that I, I know, well, I on. know, uh, it's not the same. It's not the same. Yes, it's <laughs> not the same. Because just listen to it. <laughs> but hold on, just listen for a second here. <clears throat> yeah, just the, attitude, the the overarching attitude that they're sending a bunch of rapists and thugs that they just that is don't not what I said. Like, that they create. That, that they I create. Said. That they create that enclaves. is the conclusion of the police investigation. Sure, that's that is fine. not what, something that's I fine. said. And it's a lot the of conclusion of the police investigation. And a lot of police investigations begin and end right in Mexican communities. These are America. facts, a lot of not assumptions. Yeah, I'm not denying the fact. And I'm just you, saying. Can you hey, show I'm, me? Can you show me the district of some major U.S. city, which is essentially not only entirely populated by Mexicans, but where there is Mexican law, where there's a parallel Mexican legal system, where people cheer for Mexican terrorists, where people hide Mexican terrorists. I can find you most of that in really? many, many Western American cities. Yeah. They, really? they're the not Mexican allowed to, terrorist I mean, shot up a cinema and is then hidden in a city district. There are neighborhoods that you can go to in major American cities where you may as well be in another country. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Does. The American. Yes. The American country. Like. Like. America will intervene. Cops will show up if shit goes down. Well, I. I would say Mexican. Life. Mexican terrorists here would probably be more like gang members, cartel members. There is yeah. No such thing as Mexicanism. Yes. Right. That there is, is true. No. <coughs> they're. They're profit. Uh, okay. But yeah, they're in for profit. I mean, like you. you 
You're not, you're never, there's never going to be two things that are absolutely the same on every base level of comparison, okay? An analogy is always only meant to fucking compare certain aspects between two things. I think what Paul, the more important thing about what Paul's trying to say is that there are these attitudes in America towards certain communities. And there are definitely places in America where, you know, if you're white, chances are you don't want to be walking around there, especially past a certain time. And it's not just to do with immigrants either. I mean, there's communities that have been here for a long time, like the black community. There's plenty of black areas where white people are definitely very hesitant to go. And, yeah, they, do, was, uh, and was, they do have their own law and order there. I I mean, lived, the gangs yes, but, but run the Paul places. Was mainly, Paul was mainly talking about the attitudes coming from the U.S. population. Sure. Whilst the point I'm trying to make is that the Muslim population, the migrant population in Europe, has a far worse attitude than any kind of Mexican migrant population would have in the United States. I mean, maybe Far so. Because, go, because, go buy yourself a Jewish keeper and find yourself someone with whom you could pose as a gay boyfriend and go take a walk through an Islamic district of a city. Come sure. you know, there's, are you, are, you know, there's plenty of places I wouldn't do that here, though, either. Are, yeah. you, are you a white guy? Yes. Come to the town that I grew up in and eight o'clock on a warm, balmy Sunday evening, walk down C Street in Madeira. Okay. Give another example for you, the one I wanted to give previously. Sure. Germany today is one of the safest, okay, maybe used to be one of the safest countries for Jews to live in in Europe. Some might find this ironic. Uh, Mainly, you know, we have laws protecting the Jewish community. There's a lot of safety measures. And in general, I like to think that we at least try to learn something out of our Plus history. Plus, there's a, there's a little bit of guilt there, too. Like, oh, oh, for sure. sure. Yes, <laughs> for sure. A lot of guilt. A lot of guilt. <laughs> and the thing is, recently, Jews of Germany, the Jewish community in Germany, has been warned not to publicly identify themselves as Jews mainly because of the extreme rise in anti-Semitism that has been brought in with the Islamic migrant communities, Jews leaving France in their thousands because they're hunted through their streets, have their businesses burnt down in riots. The Muslim migrant <coughs> population in Europe, in some countries, particularly in France, they behave like S.A. brown shirt thugs. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely heard uh, some horror stories yeah, about France that kind of Yeah, Belgium, shit. too. I mean, a lot of problems with Belgium. That's the kind of thing that really kind of worries me is that there's so many people who identify as liberal, who obviously are opposed to racism, yes, who obviously are opposed mean. to um, sexism, who obviously are opposed to uh, homophobia, transphobia, oh, whatever. Ben but these very same people, you know, when it comes to defending Islam, they're the first people to stand up and be like, you're yeah, racist. Islam. It's like, but but you're you're basically defending people who are against all of your other values. Like, you, every other value you hold, these people hate Dude, it. that's like feminism and Islam, yes. dude, to a T. Yes, yeah. I, I call that the poisonous alliance. It's, it's a really disgusting thing. Uh, I, I, you, the, the video, I mean, we can disregard it now. You, you remember the example I gave? that we, a lot of gay refugees come to Germany. Yeah. From countries like Russia, Kenya, Uganda, places where they would face the death penalty. And we had to build a separated gay people and lesbian people only refugee center in Nuremberg because um, in the other refugee homes they were beaten and violently assaulted by the new Muslim newcomers. And the media sides on that topic, that was so shameful. Just oh, you know, so media, disgusting. I, I can't find, it's hard to find anyone the, not in the entire the world. That, but the, the political silence. Right. The people who get screaming, like, oh, refugee, welcome. Oh, you you can't criticize Islam. It's a blah, 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 racist. We have this, oh, you know, yes, yes, the, yes, the government let, definitely let makes sure that shit is not covered. We have the same problems here in terms of our media and shit. I mean, it's... The, the it's media not, and politicians being cozy is definitely a problem. It's not about, uh, it's not usually about Islam here, but there's it's, tons it's of other issues. It's, it's the yeah, they want to correct narrative. And yeah, they want to craft that, that narrative. Some people have, you know, you have various groups where some people put them into um, a certain aspect of a oppression Olympics game, saying, "Oh, these people are gay, these are lesbians, these are Muslim, these are Jews," and some people seem to have the delusion that all of them can sit together happily around a camping fire and sing songs. 
when well, fact is you know, I mean, uh, fucking, fucking cats. There could be a there could be a home, you know, stray cats and stray dogs, but you don't necessarily want to put them together in the same pen. You know, um, the dogs are gonna fucking yeah, tear the cats the apart. Is, the Islamic community in Europe is the most hostile in this regard. We had bombs go off in, in Hindu temples. We had gay people being assaulted, occasionally even murdered. We had the anti-Semitism is fucking unbelievable by now in most parts of Europe. It's, it's mainly something that comes out of the Islamic community. How do you the fix hostile. it? How do you fix it? I've been asking the path that I've chosen the whole time. To the... Cha the, pa the I don't have the solution. Maybe there is no solution. You know, there is no perfect society. There is no utopist. There's always going to be a struggle over what is the current problem and how <clears> to <throat> fix it. And the thing that I'm doing right now is talk a lot to ex-Muslims. That's what I do. I hope to further ex-Muslims. People like Introverted Smiles and Focus Breaker Beeb. I believe that this is mainly... That is actually something I really believe, that there must be a humanistic spark in the Islamic world, that it that changes it to no longer being the Islamic world. You know, we don't. I mean, speak the thing that the, the thing that is um, the thing that it's encouraging, I think, is that you know, if you look at our own societies, we can definitely look at times of um, extreme barbarism far greater than what exists today. So, I mean, it doesn't. It does seem like civilizations can turn this shit around but the real question is is there even any willpower within any corner of the muslim world to do that because it seems like most of I the even the moderate so. muslims it seems like most of even I moderate mean, look, muslims look, 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 are look. more concerned with being lumped together with extremists rather than actually opposing extremists true well with the exception well there, there are exceptions such as majid nawaz but you know we have the we have, of course have the problem as atheists that why the fuck would we support moderate muslims we generally believe there's no god there's always right. this inherent conflict and there's it's kind of a lesser maybe, of two evils thing at that point yeah the, the, which, the, the, there's also the kind of thing you know the, there's kurdistan which is still somewhat weakened, but still a little bit more enlightened than the rest of the Islamic world. Then there's maybe Bosnia. Okay, Bosnia is maybe not such a good example because they're forced to live together with um, Serbs and Croats and therefore have to build a tolerant society. But it still doesn't change the fact that when Al-Qaeda tried to build a base for uh, its operations in Europe in Bosnia, they left Bosnia saying, well, these people, they... They drink too much, they fuck too much, they dance too much, so we can't operate from there. So what about, just uh, to an extent, doesn't, uh, but it's doesn't um, London have a Muslim mayor now, but uh, he's, yeah, he's pro... He's, I mean, like, he, whatever, I don't really know much about him, but I know he's, like, pro-LGBT and shit like that. So, I mean, like, that yeah, at least seems like a step ties, in the right direction. He had ties to some pretty nasty Islamist organizations, at least to what I have read. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the thing is that Islam is still this unifying force in the Islamic world. It, I like to give this tiring example. It's, it's pretty annoying to most people because it's, it sounds so outdated. 200 years ago, when Napoleon was de defeated in Europe, um, it was the Russian Tsar Alexander who mainly defeated him, and he marched into Paris and was celebrated as the big hero of the Napoleonic Wars. And then he was invited into a congress hall uh, to talk to all the other allies from Austria and Britain and Prussia. And he marched in there and said, let's form a holy Christian alliance and march into the Middle East and conquer it for Christianity. And he was laughed out of the room. It's, it's not the 12th century anymore. Why the fuck are you proposing this to us? You know, Christianity ceased to be this unifying force for us. It no longer is. Yeah, I, I, still is <clears throat> yeah I, I agree. I mean, like, I don't know how, I don't know if it's, it's too unifying because it seems like they're not very unified, really, for the most part. I mean, like, most terrorist attacks committed by Muslims still tend to be against other Muslims, like, well, way Sunni disproportionately. Yeah, I mean, not even... It's not even that. I mean, it's just like, oh, are you part of, like, the groups who virtually believe the same things even hate each other because, you know, we want our group to be on top. Fuck this other group, even though they're pretty much the same as we are. And so it's not always well, it, just it, along it Sunni Shia. The fact that, 
it doesn't change the fact that Islam is the responsible culprit in this. Oh yeah, it doesn't. But Do I mean, you know, it doesn't change. It's, it's religion. It's not just yeah. Islam. Let's call it what no. it is. Oh please, please. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> oh please. When when we just right now pretty much put to solid ground that Christianity hasn't been a unifying force anymore for 200 years. I mean, there have been over 40,000 Islamic terrorist attacks in the past 20 years. And the victims of these dwarf, whatever the victims of right. Christian terrorism may have been in the past 100 years combined. Throw, throw, a, throw a, a little economic crash into the mix. I think you'd what, be surprised. What does the economic crash have to do with anything? There's a unifying... There, the, um, Christianity is still a unifying force in America. What does Christian in America, but not in the West, the Christian world in total? Islam, you know, the statistic I put that Dr. Lehman put into the video, that uh, the majority of Muslims in quite a few Islamic countries see themselves as Muslim first and nationality second. Well, there's plenty of fucking, like, uh, it, it's not obviously the same level of extremism, but things like um, that county clerk here in America who refused to issue gay marriage licenses even after um, the Supreme Ted, Court. Ted Cruz said he was a Christian yeah, first. Yeah, they all say, they said, like, we're Christians yeah. first, obviously American not, second. Obviously not doing and, the and, same and, thing. You know, and also, obviously and they also, don't, they're not out of control to the anywhere near the same extent, but... Not even close. You know, they are influencing our society. In fact, in some ways they're more dangerous because... They're not that extreme. They're not so, so extremist that no one listens to them. They're actually able to affect policy change, you, things you like that. Really believe, do you really believe that the problem in the Islamic world is that their clerics are so extreme that nobody listens to them? No, fact, I think the, the problem, problem in the Islamic world... I think the problem in the Islamic world is that uh, Islam, Islam as a religion was founded by a violent warlord who said conquer at the end of a sword. And by so, the way, I mean, they're Ted very... He's uh, he's nowheresville, but that doesn't. I mean, that's that's yeah. whatever. I mean, we we it's not been that long since we've had a crazy evangelical president. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, you know, and it, it 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 could easily happen again. Yeah. But um, the thing about it is, you know, Islam is is fucked the way it is because at the very inception of Islam, this was what it was. There's not there was yeah, a, the, it, you know, <laughs> Christianity was founded by a fucking you know a, a hippie. Who said uh, love yeah, each when, other? But the main problem still is what is now, and you can't deny the fact that right now, in this very moment, the predominantly violent, uh, fascistic religious movement in the world is Islam. I don't deny that. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. And there's. I'm. I'm talking specifically to because he brought up Christianity. To compare Islam with Christianity right now, as if they were somehow an equal threat. That's just. Oh, well, ridiculous. I mean, uh, look. I just think. I think what he's saying is that if you do something to America, like, let's say we undergo like a total economic depression and you know all uh, all sorts of disaster strikes us, the economy is totally destabilized, people are starving in the streets. Do it, would there would there probably be some kind of Christian militant movement rising up? Good chance. No, no. Good chance. Europe yeah. Was a, Europe was undoubtedly more religious eighty years ago, seventy right. years ago. I think this is when the this problem. entire not... fucking continent was a wasteland in despair in 1945, and it didn't rise to Christianity. It rebuilt itself. I don't know if that. It I don't know that you guys have the same flavor of Christianity that we have over here, though, because all of your all the crazy Christians migrated here as soon as they found out about Take it, so they could do their Spain. shit here. Take a trip to Spain and talk to a Spanish Catholic fanatic. We do have that flavor. I know people who want to reintroduce a Catholic absolutist monarchy. You know, many uh, many churches in the United States believe that Catholics aren't even real Christians. It's very strange. And many Catholics here believe <laughs> that Protestants are not real Christians. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure many Protestants here. The idea that we don't have religious zealots coming out of Christianity is simply untrue. We have them as well. And the basic ah. fact, well, they're not as much involved in politics in most countries. They're still involved in 
Poland, in Italy, and in Spain. I just think if you, I think if you lived here in America and you could really feel like the flavor of the zeitgeist here and see the people we're talking about and really live amongst them, you would maybe be a little bit more mm. eager to agree with us. But you know, that's well, the, the, the flavor, I can't. I'm not going to make. I'm not going to make some argument of like, well, you had to be there because. I don't think you always no, have to be there. Because I think it, okay, okay. I think it goes both ways too. Like I, I think that the flavor of the zeitgeist in Europe right now is Muslims. It's just not here, and I understand uh, your your desire. The reason I keep trying to push you on the end game is because I want to know what the solution is. What is your proposed solution? You close the borders, then what? I Ideas really aren't, like, aren't. I don't I, really like people who talk about final solutions that often, for obvious reasons. <laughs> I believe well, that sure, you go okay. from problem to problem and solve them individual, individually. I don't know you, what what idea you have in your head that we somehow have to ha bring this this great final solution that will end all our problems and create some kind of perfect world. No, <laughs> this is not how our society works. This is I would how like... a free and open society works. It's going from problem fr to problem, arguing for solutions to problems, individual specific solutions in society, and making your case and then putting your case to a vote. That sure. is how our society is structured and built. The idea that we need a grand solution is just, it's preposterous, it's idiotic. It doesn't, that's exactly the line of thinking that leads to really stupid things happening in the first place. Is it your contention that the liberal Western society that you live in is not going to survive if this Muslim problem is not addressed? No, I believe, I'm not someone who believes that the Muslims are taking over. I believe that we're going to have a lot of social strife. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, by now it's unavoidable, but we're going to have more if we don't confront this problem, honestly. If we don't confront Islam, honestly. And if we don't I... defend our values. And with values, I mean, for example, to co combat this self-censorship. You know, the notion that criticizing the religion and criticizing the communities, the Islamic communities, and how they behave and how they structure themselves is somehow racist or something. I think that I you're, I think you you're absolutely right about that. Um, the writing's already on the wall for that. There's, that's clear. Nothing can happen in a society when people can't even be honest about the problems that afflict the society. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap this segment up. Um, you can stay on with us as we watch some videos, or you can go if you wish. Um, as or, you wish. It's, I'm fine either way. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You can stick that. around. We're going to probably do maybe another like 40, maybe 50 minutes of uh, watching some videos and then I'm we're going to call it a night. Let me get a drink. Okay. All right. So, do you want to. You want to wait for him to come back? No, I say we'll just, we'll just start. No, I, already, right. I have my beers here. He's good. Uh, he's got it. It's there, he's German. Yeah. They're within arm's reach, You know what? Man. I, I went to uh, a beer garden in Germany, and I asked the guy uh, serving the beer which beer he liked, and he said he didn't even like beer. That's horrible. Yeah. I was kind of blown away. What a bad person. Yeah, I know. He should die. He should die. I, I, find it, I find it interesting how people abroad have this idea that we make the best beer with the best beer. If we're honest, comes out of the Czech Republic. Oh, I I like the we beer. like Belgian beer. Yeah, the beer out of Belgium. No, no, no. The Czechs they have the perfect water, the perfect soil, I am, the perfect um, everything. I'm d I have Czech descent, the, so the only I'll Czech have to go beer, check that out. The only Czech uh, beer that's common here is Pilsner Arquell. Yeah, I was I, I was hoping that on the next time I went to Europe, I would I'd be able to visit my ancestral homelands of Scotland and uh, the Czech Republic. So. <laughs> Although it was yeah, Czechoslovakia when my peoples left. When you, when you go to Europe, it's about going to the more secret places, not to the obvious places where you run into obnoxious American tourists. <laughs> I like I like being around the obnoxious American tourists because I am one. You can always tell Americans if you're in, if you're traveling in Europe as an American, you can always tell when there's other Americans them. around because you can oh, hear yeah. them before you see them. I, I them. I Americans a, are loud. I met an American, met an American in in Berlin, who asked me where the Eiffel Tower is. <laughs> we're we're sorry about that. Yeah. We're extremely sorry. Know. <laughs> we're dumb. <laughs> Where you know? is it? <laughs> we are not an educated hasn't, people. Hasn't been um, in Germany for seventy years. Let's play this shit. All right, let's do. Where oh, is the oh, Eiffel Tower so, in Germany, by the way. 
<laughs> All right, so uh, someone made this for you, TJ. Okay, this is so. a Hillary Clinton trigger warning. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. People need to be warned before this. This is a trigger warning. Wow, it's frightening. I think this we need a trigger warning for that trigger warning. So it's a uh, Hillary reacts to email report. Yeah. You've said that what you did was allowed under the rules, but the report specifically says the State Department did not and would not have approved your exclusive <sighs> reliance on a personal email account. Uh, so here's the question. Did you break the rules? Well, Wolf, you know, this report makes clear that <laughs> Not a direct email answer. Yep. was the practice under Hello. other secretaries of state. And the rules were not clarified until after I had left. Oh, so it's ambiguous, basically. Oh, we didn't I'm know. I'm in the and I don't know the rules. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant, yeah. These rules were not clarified until after I left. Yeah, sh so. Shouldn't you have made the rule, Hillary? Shouldn't you know the rules? Um, yeah, this thing about th this great thing about these email reports. I mean, like it basically shows, yeah, Hillary was involved in wrongdoing. She didn't follow the rules. You know, she basically put classified documents at risk. Um, but she's politically powerful, so let's just sweep it all under the rug. You know, I mean, some people are saying there is enough there for indictment. It probably will not no, happen. It won't happen because it's Hillary Clinton. But you know what's great is um, on the day that all this broke and there was all these news stories about it, I went to the Huffington Post. One word. Not a fucking word. Not a single fucking solitary article about it. Love it. I love these people who try to craft the narrative to whatever they want. But as I've said many times, it was still a mistake. If I could go back, I'd do it differently. Yeah, it was a mistake. And I understand she didn't break any concerns rules. about this, but I hope voters look at the full picture of everything that I've done and the full threat posed by a Donald Trump presidency. <laughs> and if they do, I have faith. Be afraid of Donald people, Trump. Make okay. The right the reports. Sure, I was an incompetent nitwit who fucking put classified she made documents a in danger, a but it was just an oopsie. Trump's the real threat. It's like, eh. Fucking bitch. Remember before, she never did anything wrong. So it is, it is a constantly evolving narrative where, oh, now it was a mistake. Oops. It says, uh, and I'll read a, a sentence from the report, Madam Secretary, that the Department of State and the Internal Revenue Manual did not and would not approve her exclusive reliance on a personal email account to conduct department business because of the restrictions of the Foreign Affairs Manual and the security risks in doing so. Uh, uh, those are specific words that says that specifically says you those are specific words, unlike yeah. the ones you speak. <laughs> Wolf, why are you even wasting your fucking breath? Hillary's not going to be like, okay, you know what, now you put it that way. Yeah, I did it. Good old Chihuahua Blitzer nipping I at broke her heels the law. again. <laughs> FBI, <laughs> come, come put the fucking handcuffs on me. You know, not going to happen. We, why are we all pretending that, like, Hillary Clinton's going to get indicted or something? Like, it's not, it's, the, we, we come from a country where we, like, usher war criminals away to a quiet retirement. Like, that's, like, <laughs> we don't, oh, we don't I've never prosecute. said that. We don't prosecute people of, of, of Hillary's, you know, stature. Stature. You were, not, you were not authorized to do so. Why didn't you ask for <coughs> authorization? Well, I thought it was allowed. I knew. I didn't know. The state. Okay. It, it, I'm you know, as clueless Hillary. I don't know is, shit. The, the true answer is Hillary doesn't ask for authorization. Of bitch. course she doesn't. I mean, like, uh, this idea, like, oh, I didn't know. That was the rules. It's like, what? I mean... You wouldn't let any uh, fucking whenever you're a, if you're a criminal and you break the law and you go before the judge like I didn't know that was the law. They say ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's a common refrain. Yep. But I guess it's okay for Hillary. Doesn't ignorance, it, ignorance of the law is fine for her. Well, TJ, you're not fucking rich and powerful, so it doesn't really matter. I should be. God damn it. If you were, then you the, uh, the same should happen uh -huh. to you. You would get away with it. Give me some money. Uh, use personal email. Um, Secretary Kerry did for. Oh, now she's time. throwing Carrie under the bus. Carrie did it, too. It's okay. Clarified. They were not uh, a model of clarity, and it seems like there's still more work to it, do It needs to be that. a model so, of clarity. Yes, I believed it was allowed, but that's not the They point. didn't put a sticky note on my computer that says, don't use okay. personal well, servers. For... I believed it was allowed. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You believe something. Sure, you can believe whatever the fuck you want. doesn't make it true or correct. Mm. Good old Hillary. Point. I said it was a mistake. 
And furthermore, Wolf, I have provided the department with all of the work-related emails that I had. Fighting I for us. for them to be made public. Who's and us? that's really what is us. at the core of any kind of uh, uh, effort to make sure that uh, material is uh, collected. Dude, so and, Hillary was uh, leading the effort for her to be scrutinized. Yeah, she was. I was at the core of it. She's like, yeah, I was leading the charge against me. That's how fucking principled I am. Uh, give me a fucking break. Yeah, whatever. She said nothing. That I'm just going to rub in right now that I live in a country with six political parties. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds. Choice. You still, you still ended up with with Merkel anyway. You know, so. even yeah. if even if we have third parties, they don't even end up on the ballot in every state, so they have no chance of winning, and they're not allowed to be on the national debates. Only the two major. The only parties time that, that the only time that any of I think Ross Perot was yep. out in the debate. Yeah, that was the only time. <laughs> That's because they. I, I just but, oh man wouldn't vote if I were in that country right now. If I were American, I wouldn't vote. That's well, uh, there we go. That's pretty much what we're faced with for yeah. the most part. Yep, that's my position. I'm staying home. Uh, this video is called uh, "No Gay Space Colonies." Okay, cool. Rock God on. God made them male and female. Okay, this this is a representative. Um, I know him. That's Gomez, isn't he? He's yeah. The yep. The insane one. Yeah, he's pretty crazy. <laughs> Good old Louie. <laughs> Didn't mention question marks. These are people we need to love and encourage. The Diagnostic Statistical Manuals for most of... Uh, Manuals? Existence. He's talking about... <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about the DSM. I, I, I know, the but yeah. why do you say manimals? The manimals. He's talking about gay people, isn't he? He's talking about no, he's gay talking people. Oh, he's talking of about course. the manimals, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Diagnostics of gay people. Yeah, that's what I'm exactly. talking about, man. Thank the, you. Well, thank you. I just was, need to have a British. I'm Louis, I, I just need to have a British. I just need to have a, a, a European follow me around and just interpret everything. I, I, I had the distribution manual. <laughs> that might actually be a good idea. Every time he speaks, you set up some posh guy with an English accent to translate everything. I'll just take you. I am here to just... declare to you the <laughs> statistics I pulled out of my ass about yeah, man. homosexuals I, I in this country. Oh, st statistics. Oh, yeah, no, they don't argue like that. It's the word of God. It's the Bible. And pointed out that these are mental disorders. These are people that we're to love, They're encourage, sick. help every way we can. For among educated, compassionate people, for our civilized history, yeah. people... All I, all I hear is this, as I talk about those dirty faggots, I <laughs> can't help thinking about the dick, the rubbing their cocks against each other. He has a Republican. He, he looks like... Skin. Look at his ears. They look like handles for when you're butt-fucking him. <laughs> that didn't know which he was uh -huh. was pitied, loved, encouraged. Uh, we pity I, I him. Bet, I, I bet amongst the, the, the other gay dudes in his locker room in high school, Gomert was a euphemism for a great blowjob. I bet there are still I bet there are still dudes alive out there that are like, man, that was a pretty good blowjob, but man, it didn't hold a candle to that Gomert I got that one time, man. <laughs> Yeah, call him getting to go me. <laughs> but educated people said that's perverse. That's basically the most widely used used uh, where the word perverse was most widely used. Perverse. Okay. How the fuck? What the fuck was that? How the fuck does know. this guy get elected? They perverse. Uh, uh, you used know why? widely used. Because he talks real Texas. The life. only thing that's widely used is your asshole. You fucking. Closeted fucking the, the, little. This is the same guy that would get fucked in the ass and be like, stone the faggots. Oh, you know when they're amongst their friends and buddies, where they're saying, well, if we could just take care of this faggot problem real quick, we just kill them all. Kill them, stupid rednecks. I just hate. I just hate the and, way that they have to tap dance around what they're trying to say here. Yeah, like, just come out and say it. Yeah, just like, oh, dear, uh, I got the statistic manual. Like you hate faggots. <laughs> just say you hate faggots. I don't like it. It's dirty. 
They put the penis in the butthole, and that ain't By right. the way, by the way, the uh, homosexuality is no longer in the diagnostic statistical well, manual. Uh, well, it hasn't it should, been, since, it hasn't yeah. been since, like, the 70s yeah, or 80s. So, and this last time this guy wrote a book. What the fuck was so. he talking about? I, think, I don't know, dude. Now we have a government that says, forget what the Bible says. Yeah. <laughs> forget what... That. Moses said, <laughs> what forget did, what Jesus what said when he quoted it? Moses verbatim and then added, and what God has joined together, nobody should separate. You just like Even if you don't believe Jesus <sighs> was part of the Holy Trinity as our founders did. No. Do you really want to leave this life and potentially, whether you believe in a judge, a maker or not, say, oh, I didn't think you were serious when you said those things about marriage. I didn't think you were serious. Okay, it's ridiculous. I have a question. You're not a I have a question. Go yes, on. yes. General speeches. Do you, do you have like this moment in your Congress where just any representative can just go to the stage and jibber jabber whatever bullshit they want to? Yeah, that's yes. called a. Um, it's called a. Uh, um, what the filibuster? Filibuster. I don't think that. I don't think he's uh, filibustering. No, he's not filibustering right now. But he was just asking if if we had that, and we do. Like. Well, well, he gets to to stand up and say whatever he wants about any issues going on in his district. Yeah, yeah. it's so. just a general speech. Like they're allowed to do this anytime that they want. Yep. Yeah, they they you would be ejected from most European parliaments probably. A filibuster. A filibuster is when the, someone just talks to like delay a vote. They yeah, they, and they can and talk, talk. They can talk, make a talk. So they can make a speech for just you know as long as they want. Yeah. Like there have been like twenty four hour filibusters and shit where you yeah, know. Yeah, we don't we don't have that here. We a bill is proposed, Parliament debates it. it. It's not speeches. It's debated, and every party kind of sends a representative out and it's debated, and then the bill is passed or not. Yeah, this and is just him. Limit. This is just him standing up and being like, "All right, I, this is uh, I've appropriated this time for a speech about how I hate faggots, wicked way, you know. perverse faggots, uh, the Bible. Okay. Faggots is evil, and the uh, book the book says so, and it's, people reject God. And it's man. a campaign speech, isn't it? It's a campaign speech. It's for his voting district to see. Exactly. Yes, of course. basically, and just then, so they can see, he goes, like, he hates faggots. He hates faggots. He I hate fought faggots. against faggots. These for guys you. run every two Can't. years." Then he goes back to his office, counts his lobbying money, and then goes back to Congress and votes for whatever his lobbyists told him to vote for. See, you do understand he, our system. It, yeah. The only thing you missed is he probably sucks a dick in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yes. you, yeah you, uh, you left out the part about the highway rest stop that he goes to <laughs> after he has dinner. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Got tap your foot to the left. To you just... <laughs> gives a really good old Gomert and then goes on about his day. <laughs> weren't smart enough to know that he didn't just email. I mean, I, I really wonder how many people in this body who had the ultimate power to decide... How many, how many people are in your body? He, Is that what you just asked me? I don't know. I've not Everything been to that truck stop. Everything is a stop. euphemism. Everything about this man is a euphemism. Uh, <laughs> that's how we like our information delivered to us here in America. We like euphemism. Humanity would Weird. go forward or not, whether it was an asteroid coming, something <laughs> oh, that would yeah. end uh, humanity on Earth uh -huh. as dinosaurs were, were ended at one time. Okay. Oh, okay, what? we've got a spaceship. <laughs> Do you even believe in dinosaurs? That can go as Matt a Damon spaceship. did in the movie, plant a colony somewhere. We can fuck? have humans survive. With the this. Bible. Hold, what, uh, hold on, hold on. He's Sorry. Gonna get, he's going to get to his point here. Yeah, well, what is the point? This here, is crazy. Here we go, here we go terrible disaster about to befall if you could decide what 40 people you put on the spacecraft that would <laughs> save humanity how many of those would be same-sex couples that is a good point guys they're all same-sex couples honestly, no, honestly, no babies none. None, none of them would be you got me, Louie. Uh, if the asteroid is hurtling towards Earth, Paul, we only got we only got a few hours left. How many same-sex couples are you look, putting on the on the on the forty-seat shuttle, Paul? How many? 
Well, considering like reproduction's gonna be like the biggest deal to us, probably none, Scotty. Probably none. Damn, probably no Paul. Gays on the shuttle. Sorry, Paul gays. Paul is, and the is gay a genocide. The gay genocide. Paul is a bigot. It doesn't matter. There'll be new gays. What born about gays from those willing, people? What about know, gays not, willing not, to have sex with the opposite sex just for reproduction? Yeah. Oh, then they can go. Yeah, Long make dessert. them all gay. Huh? Yeah. They can. I'm they can just. That. Yeah, they can just do like artificial insemination. At least we know. There you go. At least we know all the, 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 the outfits in the future will be fabulous. There so. you go. So this is basically just. Um, this is just Joseph Martelli's island, but in space. Right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only this guy's an elected official instead of just a raving psycho. Uh, uh, one and the same. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, I guess, uh, recently the leader of the Taliban was killed, so now they have a new leader. Go figure. I hope it's oh. me. Am I the new leader? No, it's not you. It's this guy. Sorry, TJ. The Damn first it. real official not statement him. from the Taliban since the death of Mullah yeah, Mansour. Uh, now their, uh, second of three leaders in, appointed in just around about a year. Now, uh, at this stage, at this statement declaring three days of mourning, confirming the death of Mullah Mansour, and also appointing his successor. A little-known man, formerly one of Mansour's deputies, called Haibatullah uh, Akunzar. Now he is thought to be more clerical. Great, a new name to try to pronounce. Yeah, oh Mal 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 Yeah, I'm not even trying. He's gonna be dead in a few months anyway. Yeah, he'll, he'll I know. last long. Like, at what point? Do, at what point do people just start like saying "nah, no thanks"? Like because every couple of months it's like, well, <laughs> Ayatollah Hapatipi died. It's time to. <laughs> Let's just call him Zada. Him. Your name is shortened to Zada. Yeah, yeah. get Akun Zada. <laughs> Man, get him in here. He's the new leader. Uh, they need. They need just. Get, they need to give themselves like cute code names, like you know. Why is uh, this breaking news too? Like, is this, like breaking news? Paul, Everything's Paul, breaking it's news. CNN. Everything. It's CNN. I mean, come on. <coughs> yeah, dude. As it These super villain in names. Sort of, uh, adjudication of the Sharia law the Taliban espouse than someone who's necessarily involved in the battlefield, uh, a less controversial figure. They certainly didn't choose to appoint a man oh, who's right the Taliban chief justice. It's good. <laughs> what kind of a statement is this? A less controversial figure. Yeah. The leader Isn't he the leader? Taliban. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> He's a more okay. moderate Taliban leader, guys. Don't worry. He's going to take the hey, Taliban in a also, progressive he was new the direction. Chief, he was the chief justice of the Taliban, too. So, I mean, look, that's we're hearing his qualifications now. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank God they got this does, guy Does he in. like to play volleyball, too? Like, what else can I fucking learn about this riveting fucking story? It is main facilitator and the current battlefield deputy in the Taliban. Oh, more educated. The um, but there he is. Oh. Look at him. Oh, look God. at him. Well... I probably, you know what? I probably could have closed my eyes and drawn this guy. Yeah, <laughs> like, probably. It, it gotten pretty close because, like, <laughs> pretty much er everything that I that I kind of imagined is there. The turban, the beard, it's all. Yep, I could have gotten pretty close to this dude. Well, at the same time, too, any. You want to get close to him, Paul? Notion well, that suddenly this man's appointed. Yeah, anyway. yeah, they are pulling in. Yeah, they yeah. Find yeah. A moment <laughs> <of> <laughs> closer. Pulling on those by, lips. Uh, yeah. Ten people being killed in a suicide bombing in Kabul. Those, in fact, court workers uh, on their way to work. So, uh, Taliban moving very quickly here, uh, but you still at this stage. Un this man is an expert. Or do you uh, think he's no. just no? Exactly. No, he's probably reading a teleprompter. A yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's a talking head, basically, is what he is. Oh, the news! The news is completely useless here. Fucked. Uh, so yeah. it's completely no, he is well. useless. It, is it really as bad as this? Do you guys just have hours and bad. hours of filler, it's, drivel, it's bullshit? Well, we we don't really have twenty. Well, we have a twenty-four-seven news network, but it shows documentaries most of the time. Is it breaking enough. news when the Taliban names a new leader in your country? No. Oh, just then, yeah. breaking news. Afghan Taliban names new leader. Which, oh, which one is it? <laughs> breaking news. Woman in Los Angeles slips on banana peel. A plane beer. crash. <laughs> a plane crash would be breaking news, but something like this wouldn't. Yeah, well, that's how we imagine breaking Breaking news, or at least people from my yeah. generation. Dude, I've seen, I've seen breaking news for like Kim Kardashian said yeah. this. It's oh, like, fuck. Uh, okay, just kill me. I, I like, I want to fuck her asshole, but I don't really care what she has to say about anything. If she can just be mute and I fuck her, then that, that's fine. Yeah.
I have another NRA ad. We could watch that. Okay. All right. Real tough Americans. The only truly free people who have ever walked this earth have been armed people. Capable of defending them. Huh? So, yeah. So, you're not truly free. Everyone out there that lives in a country where you can't just carry a gun around, um, <coughs> They're not you're free. not really free. And even if you do live in such a country, if you don't personally have a gun, you're not free. You gotta have a gun in your hand at all times, no matter what you're doing. Guns are the basis of all freedom. Without guns, there is no freedom. It's true. Wayne LaPierre looks so fucking weird, too. He's starting to look like Herman Munster or something. Huh? Huh? Yeah, his, his, his fucking, like, cheeks are starting to get gaunt and, like, sucked in. It's pretty weird. ...themselves and their families. Americans look in horror. What does this sped up small town footage countries have to do all over the with world Where innocent people live or die at the mercy of their government. We hey, maybe you Germans just need more guns. I'm not a free man, but the reason for that isn't fire. It's pretty much that my speech is limited, for example. But if but you yeah, had a gun, you know, they wouldn't do that to I you. You gotta make the I government afraid of you. you. I find the overarching sentiment to see be so bluntly stupid because we have a lot of countries here where you can very easily buy a fan. There's Switzerland, Belgium, there's Poland, Lithuania. There's a lot of countries here where you can very easily acquire a firearm. Austria, the Czech Republic, and to a certain extent Hungary. And the, the thing he said previously, you know, if they had firearms, they could have, you know, defended themselves or something like this. Along the talking lines of, you know, when the Paris attacks happened, oh, if they had guns, they could have protected themselves. Um, you know where the sudden influx of firearms uh, into France came from? It's uh, when the Gaddafi regime was overthrown, a lot of the arsenal, the army arsenal in Libya was smuggled into France. And now you have gangs, criminal gangs fighting each other with Kalashnikovs in Marseille. And you have firearms widely available in France. Sounds so like freedom to me, buddy. Sounds yeah. like freedom to me. Freedom is the a idea gun that, fight. You know, this is just a recent development. It doesn't really justify completely over, you know, changing the laws of the land completely. <laughs> You see what it's like to be French, German, or Belgian, where innocent uh, people cower in nice. fear as evil closes in. So they're planning that bomb in, Bel in the Belgian airport. Doomed if they had guns, they could have shot the bomb and, and they wouldn't have gone off. <laughs> Why didn't they think of that? No. ...and broom handles. Let the rest of the world choose to live in fear. That false brand of freedom will never be ours. We are free to be as armed, trained, and prepared. I mean, when you feel like you need to have a loaded firearm on your hip That's everywhere paranoia. you go, isn't that more driven yeah. by fear? Uh, yes. Entire... Switzerland, in Switzerland, you know, every man has to serve in the armed forces. Yeah. And after military service, every man gets to keep his assault rifle. And is, I think they have to go to militia service and border patrol every five years. Gun culture in Europe, where it exists, for example, in Poland and in Switzerland, is very militaristic. Yes. I, I went to Lucerne one time and I saw a bunch of military people there. It's interesting how everyone has to serve. Yeah, I've had people... This, this advertisement, he's talking about how we're not going to be governed by fear. And right. the entire point of this advertisement is to engender fear in people. Like right. from the soundtrack... You know the booming bum 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 no part to empower them like with a gun clouds you know i'm probably i'm probably not as well qualified to you know argue on the gun debate because i'm not really much familiar with the united states but the idea you know that firearm availability is somehow tied to liberty itself it's so ridiculous when you consider that in Russia you can buy fully automatic assault rifles, it's, which you who's can't. Who's freer buy than in Russia? United Come States. on, who's freer than Russia? I mean, uh, we can get semi-auto, but they're easily modified. We're the most free. Do we have the most guns here per capita? Uh -huh. So we're the most free. We can we can go to a gun store and acquire a gun relatively. If easily. more Russians had guns, yeah. they, they would be There's, safer. Firearm availability in in Pakistan, in in the yeah. Philippines, in Kenya. Oh, very free countries indeed. 
The idea yeah. that guns I don't, automatically uh, meet freedom nonsense. I, I, I don't it's, mean, you know, what, whatever your position yeah, on because guns, I don't think that anyone should automatically equate them. When two different groups have guns, they don't use them on each other. That never happens. You guns know? should not be equated to fucking freedom. I mean, you know. They're not. They're a, tools. A free country used. can hey, have guns, you know what? but uh, no, that I, doesn't I make it, it free. Be, it, I wouldn't say it shouldn't be equated to freedom. I mean, it, the right to own a firearm is still a freedom. Sure. Whatever you In say, that but, sense, you know, but... The idea that if you don't have guns... You are no longer uh, free, or that if you have guns, you're definitely free. That idea is just right. No, that's what I, that's what I'm criticizing. There was a petition uh, for the attendees at the Republican convention to be able to bring their guns to the convention if they wanted to, but the Secret Service wouldn't allow it. We we actually had um, a K, there was a KKK rally where the KKK petitioned the city to bring their guns to the rally so they were allowed to. Cool. Yeah. They have a constitutional right. Then. An armed clan rally. Uh, yeah. The that Second is, Amendment. Hey, that is, you got to you got to admit that is freedom right there. <laughs> I mean, it is. Oh I mean, yeah, it is. For that's sure. a, that's a, that is a good example of, of fucking freedom. You know, allowing a fucking group that we know is a hate group yeah, unambiguously a hate, a, a hate group to march armed through the streets. Yeah. I mean, you know, we do it. We're crazy yeah. here. We're fucking insane, man. But that's what. That's but what that's also need. why the police are so aggressive because they never know who who's armed. That is true. There's a cat. There's always a. There's always a drawback, man. There's always a, fl a fucking negative flip side. Yep. Aired as we see fit, and we will never surrender that freedom to the global gun ban order. Huh. The National the Rifle Association. The Illuminati. Sorry, the what now? The Global Gun no, Ban it, Order? It's the Illuminati. I've never Stop heard of it. such a thing before this. Okay, well, you guys are not very <laughs> educated in gun rights, obviously. Okay. <laughs> Wayne LaPierre just invented the new group. <clears throat> Look what they did in the UK. America's next. Registration <clears throat> equals confiscation. The GGO. Global Gun Ban Order. Confiscate all firearms of the plebs. GGBO. GGBO. I'm with the GGBO. Global Gun Ban Order. <laughs> this is like some Alex Jones shit at this point. Yeah. Take your guns away. Then they're gonna force you like cattle into the mega cities. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We're 23 hours and a day I'm in the freedom's mines. Safest place. Well, wow. wow, that's uh, you're delusional. That's wow. something, man. Congratulations, I guess. Oh, here's a. Uh, remember that that a uh, woman, that street preacher, that was screaming at the high school kids. Oh yeah, yeah. Now we, back. we we have her going into a Target. Oh god. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, wonderful. Fucking Captain so I'm Crunch. at the Captain Crunch section of Target. In I don't know why you guys are upset. This is cereal. Uh, this is freedom. Fun of street preachers for starting their message. This right is in the here. street. This is a store. <laughs> private property. By myself, let's yeah, go. it is. She has no right to be there to do this. Attention, Target. Attention, whore. God is angry with this store. Does that like a mace, this woman? Why Where is everybody? She no, went to an empty know. Target, dude. Where's the other? Yeah, where is everybody? I've never even <laughs> seen a Target this empty. She should have gotten on the intercom. Why is she like, filming the ceiling? Well, it could be. It could be that people already noticed her and fucked off in the first place. Yeah, I might have. Strong possibility. Yep. Be, if I saw her, I would run. It could be like three in the morning. Well, most too. targets are not open twenty-four hours, though. I don't know. Some are. Well, if you yeah, do it, that it here, people will think you're drunk and starting a fight or something. <laughs> Amen. This store allows grown men to go in to the women's bathroom. No, it doesn't. All in the name of tolerance. The God of the Bible <laughs> is not tolerant. Jesus Christ! <coughs> God is an asshole. Oh, wow. I've yet to see a single other person in this store. Yeah, I mean, like, I can barely handle her voice on video, uh, are so... They, are, they even, are they even going to kick her out? Are they just going to, to watch her? Like, how is that crazy cunt again? I want to see, yeah, I want to see if she actually ever encounters another person Christ here. Christ is the way! 
Right. Jesus Christ! Uh, to be honest with you, the- when shit like this happens, having worked in a retail setting, they've probably been told to just immediately call the police and not confront the person. Because part of what they're doing is they're trying to get people to confront them and physically try and remove them from the stores and shit. That, that aids le- the legitimacy or their perceived uh, legitimacy in this. Oh, of if course. somebody tackles them. This is all self-important, self-aggrandizing bullshit. That she's spreading the word of God. She's going and taking on Target. Yeah. True. Jesus Christ is the Lord. No one goes to God the Father except <laughs> through the blood of Jesus. Okay. Thank you. you. Man that want to take cameras into the girl's bathroom. The only one with a camera in the store is you. Yeah. Yeah. So. And record little girls. Shame on How many documented cases of that happening Shame are there? On Zero. Your hmm. yeah. Is this heart. a closed target? Is she a target employee? And this is like <laughs> something. She's like, Maybe hey, guys, she- just let me. Let me do something for YouTube real quick before, because I haven't seen a <laughs> single fucking customer. Yeah, there's not a single other person in here. And maybe, maybe people are just running away or moving away when they she see broke her. Into it. It's bizarre I mean, because, yeah, they, I've, I mean, like, I go to Target and, you know, there's, there's usually strange. people in there. Like, one of the reasons I don't go to Target is usually because these aisles are jam slam packed with fucking idiots trying to buy shit just like me. And I don't want to be around that. Like, it's weird. It's, it's just it's like empty. Dawn of the Dead, the empty yeah. supermarket, the empty wall. <laughs> and she's the zombie. Obama There's a, I saw a person for a second. Saying people can do this in the high schools. There's I'm some people. Sure oh, there's some people. Obama there's some people. It's worse, or this store is worse. But you started it, Target. You started <laughs> Tell a them. pervert. Revolution in The CEO America. of Target is listening in right now. Congratulations for being the bathroom perverts of the they year. They are. Bathroom perverts of the <laughs> year. Congratulations. All these people are bathroom for perverts. Just <laughs> little dudes filming her. Perverts <laughs> of the year. Repent. Perverts of the year. Turn to the guy. Target, you have won the perverts of the bathroom perverts of the year award. And at the end of the day, nobody gave a fuck. Yeah. They, they all just watched a little Kind of like, huh. Oh. That's this about Amer- this. It's America for you, man. Some crazy fucks yelling in the store. Can Everyone's you, just like, just yeah, some passing novel. Whatever. Thing. Can you imagine when she uploaded it to YouTube? Like, I did the God's work, Lord's work. Yeah. And, uh, that is the funny thing about this is that she really does feel like she's making a big old difference. Like, she probably told all her friends and showed all her family, like, look at what I'm doing to fight the good fight. Really, all she did was minorly inconvenience about a dozen people. <laughs> Who just kind of looked? At, most of them didn't even look at her. Dude, they're just like perplexed. The ones that did look at her were kind of just like, huh? I don't know about dude. you guys, but like, unless it's it, like when somebody does something like this, I actively try and not hear what they're saying. So it just kind of reduces to a ba 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 ba. Because I just like so she literally did nothing. She just pissed a few people off. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like most people were content to just completely ignore her and not even it's, look it's, at her. It's like an obnoxious drunk. You know the kind, the people who have to keep yeah, like buying me. me a beer and I tell you my life story. <laughs> I, blah, 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 blah. Oh, fuck off. It's, <laughs> it's worse when you're stuck with these people in a, in a public transportation, something like, you know, like a tram or something. Oh, yeah. Where you can't. Get away Thank, from them. Thankfully, we don't have much public yeah, transportation here we, in America. We have very That's little. good, because when, when TJ's drunk, he fucking talks shit to everybody. I so. do. Yeah. Yeah. The, every, every time I'm reminded of that, I think of, you know... Oh, London. The, yeah, yeah, the tube in London. TJ almost got in a fight with a small... Oh, this beautiful! <laughs> you fucking idiot, TJ. <laughs> That was a good time, man. Oh, I'm sure it was for you. Look at what, 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 what a story it's been in the fucking time since. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a story when we talk about derision. how much of a retard yeah. you are. Hey, man, still a story. A story you wouldn't have if not for me. Ben, TJ will take whatever he can get. He doesn't I give know. a shit. Yeah, you know. I know. You know me. Um, I guess there's a lot of criticism about 
the story that Chris Kyle had told in his book that made him famous. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's totally full of shit. Yeah, and uh, here's a, a new story about that. The legend of Chris Kyle has grown to Hollywood blockbuster levels. I'll pick it up. The man known as the American Sniper is credited with at least 160 kills during his four tours of duty in Iraq. His story has made him a U.S. military icon. Yeah. Yep. Boom. But the movie and the glorification of Chris Kyle's life ignore some troubling <sighs> stories. Of course, it's a fucking movie. Chris Kyle and his friends often told a legendary story. It involved an incident that happened to him along this stretch of highway southwest of Dallas. The story goes that Kyle was driving along, pulled into a gas station when two men attempted to carjack him while he sat in a pickup truck. He reached for a handgun and shot each man twice and they dropped dead. But this is where Kyle's story takes a strange turn. When the police arrived and ran his driver's <coughs> license, they didn't get a name or an address. What the officers got was a phone number for someone at the Department of Defense. After a short conversation, they let Kyle go. He simply drove away. It's a story that Kyle told writer Michael Mooney. Mooney wrote a lengthy profile of Kyle for D Magazine. He says Kyle claimed there was video of the shooting, but Mooney could never verify the story. Yeah, okay, this is the same mm. guy. This guy told about a million tall tales he about shit he, he did. He said he beat up Jesse Ventura. Yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> he says Didn't he went happen. to every gas station on that stretch of road across three counties, asked local and state law enforcement officials, but nobody has ever verified the incident. So shocking. Uh, ultimately, what it comes down to is he either it was either a joke that he didn't say was a joke. Uh, he was lying for some reason that we don't know uh, or self aggrandizement did an enormous conspiracy that no, no. American is going to feel no. comfortable with. No, it's not that one. It's the second one. Yeah, he made it up. <laughs> he was creating hype. He was, he was fucking weaving his own legend, of course. Yeah, yeah. the Absolutely. legend of Chris Kyle. I mean, obviously, it's worked. I mean, look, yeah. It definitely has. Yeah, and then he was killed. I mean, that's that makes it even bigger. Yeah, that only adds to it. Yeah. Yeah, this badass that always took out everyone was killed by yeah. some random guy. At a gun range. Yeah. Strangely Safety enough. Safety first. <laughs> I think he was killed intentionally. They were, yeah, they were. Oh, yeah, he was. They were exercising their freedom to shoot him in the face. That should have been the safest place. Yeah, you'd figure it would be. According to All them. those armed people there yeah. should have been yeah. totally safe. We don't know. I mean, he, the, the fact is, he was killed, and, and there's no possible way to get an answer from him now. Kyle also bragged that after Hurricane Katrina, he and another sniper snuck into New Orleans and shot 30 armed looters from the rooftop of oh the Superdome. Oh, my God. No, no, come on. Shut up. You did not fucking do that, you lying to that be, shit. Wouldn't that be a vigilantism? Yes, of course it would be. Yeah, it would be, but it doesn't matter because it never fucking happened. I don't know why you would admit to doing something atrocious like that. Because, uh, because in in his little circles, that's just like, oh wow, that's bad. Imagine, dude. imagine if, wow, he fucking was up there shooting them fucking looters. You know, yeah, he wasn't doing that. Uh, how would he even get to the fucking roof of the fucking Superdome, first of all? He did it, dude. Second in, of all, dude. there's no- It was destroyed! There's no- there's no fucking cover up there anyway! There's no- it's just a fucking- it's a dome! Where would they and, even um, be? More importantly, more importantly, after Hurricane Katrina? <coughs> yeah, the fucking city must have been a wasteland back then? Yeah, Why, it was. 80% of it was underwater. Sneak the into there. How you would wouldn't. You, you couldn't. Yeah. People couldn't get into Dude, it. That was one of the problems. The, boy, the black they, ops boat, the tiny little maneuverable black ops boat that Chris Kyle had fucking access uh, to, right? No. And oh, then, no bullshit. It was a sear you, jump, Paul. They jumped in from 60,000 feet to the Superdome. Oh, that's even better, dude. That's even better. Just draw. He, dude, he called up his friend because you know Chris <laughs> Kyle's going to have friends that's got planes. Fly me over the Superdome, say, bro. I'm going in hot. <laughs> yes. I have to say, I did like the movie, Dave. I haven't seen it, so I'm not sure. But I have. It's it's Clint Eastwood. It was Clint Eastwood, right? It was. Yeah, I tend Clint to like. I, I, I tend director, to like. So. Yeah, I tend to like Clint Eastwood as a director. So I probably would like the movie, but it's still full of shit. But yeah, whatever. Right. It's it's movies. I don't expect movies, even ones based on a true story, to be accurate because they're not historical documents. Lieutenant General Russell Honore famously spearheaded the federal response in those days. If somebody was shooting people in and around the Superdome. Trust me, we would have known about it. And I can assure you, uh, no federal 
uh, uh, forces or anybody from the armed forces was there doing any sniper work. Chris Kyle also <laughs> boasted in 2006 of punching out former Minnesota governor and Navy yeah, veteran bullshit. Jesse Ventura for allegedly making disparaging remarks about Navy SEALs fighting in Iraq. Kyle bragged about it on the Opie and Anthony radio show. Uh, you got his ponytail? No. You slugged him? Good. <laughs> I punched him. I punched him. Good. 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 Where'd you punch him? Bravo. In the face. Ventura said the incident never happened and sued Kyle for defamation. A jury sided with Ventura and awarded him nearly $2 million. The case is under appeal. We asked a spokesperson for Chris Kyle's wife to help shed light on these stories. Any details that might explain okay. Kyle's frame I'll of... I'll shed the light for you. He was a fucking liar. The end. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you want? I punch. I punched out Jesse the body of Ventura because he fucking talks shit about the Navy SEAL. This is just a lot of fucking tall and tales. He, and then he gave him a pile driver yeah. after that. He did he power yeah. bomb him after, you know, give me a break. <laughs> it, and then later the on, it was uh, discovered that uh, in a bar, Chris Kyle <laughs> weaved a yarn about lifting a two-ton boulder over his head and using it to stop a train that was heading towards a truck filled with infants. <laughs> Like, no. simply said she was not available to speak with us. What a shot. Taya Kyle spoke at her husband's funeral, alluding to the tough and emotional roller coaster of their lives. I don't need to romanticize Chris because our reality is messy, passionate, full of every extreme emotion known to man, including fear, compassion, anger, pain. Okay, okay why don't you say it's. I why have no idea. This? I have. It's like his eulogy. Why you, yeah, why aren't they showing the eulogy on, at the end of this story? It doesn't make much sense. Tug on the old <laughs> heartstrings a little. Yeah, he was know, a good yeah, guy, Stu. Yeah, we when, like when Jack. I have to mute look. myself briefly. I will be back in five minutes or. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. They they were all trashing uh, Jesse Ventura on the right because he had the lawsuit going on and he was essentially suing his estate because he was dead. Yeah. So they're like, here, they're su he's suing his widow. He sued the widow of an American hero. Uh, he sold the widow of a liar. He well, he sold the estate of uh of the man who lied about him. I mean. Yeah, he a jury, libeled him. A jury decided, yeah, that was libel, and they awarded him the money. So, whatever. You can feel pissed what that he sued an American shit. hero all you want, but he did what he did. <clears throat> and uh, Chris Kyle did not do what he claims to have done. Which calls yeah. into question all the stories that he told about the war that inspired the film, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, of right. course. I mean, uh, I guess he's, I mean, you can't take away his confirmed kill count. That exists, but, um, yeah. His romanticization of it probably is, uh, not accurate. But let's, let's, let's watch something else. Okay. We're getting close to rap time pretty soon. Why don't we do a little bit of crazy people before we, before we rap? Okay. I'll just play the intro. Where is it? Oh, it's right, right there. Fuck away. Ah, you know, fuck! Alright, I do want to remind our audience, it's probably late in the show to be saying this, but there are no shows next week. We will be in Seattle. Um, but we will be back the following Monday. Yes, we will. And we'll be better than ever. Hopefully we will be, because we're going to try a new uh, system. Yeah, we're going to try some something. We, we, we're, we're working at, at, on uh, Skype alternatives. Yes. So hopefully that'll be good. Cool. Uh, hopefully we can find something that's a little bit more reliable. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> here's, here's a good one. Communist priest of gay church rebuked by street preachers. Okay. Is your church uh, encouraged in homosexuality only for them to die of AIDS? I, I believe this is like an Episcopalian church, and they're actually uh, yeah, my tolerant. Uncle, my uncle is Episcopalian and gay. So. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. How many? Do you remember? Oh, you've lost count? Is that what happened? I'm new here. Oh, well, this church 
is a sin-friendly, gay-approving church. I think I was just eating an apple. Did <laughs> like, you know right. that? Before you signed up... Oh, man, that's fucking uh, great, dude. That's fucking great, just casually eating an apple while some dude well, yells at you. He's part of that church. Of course he knows what the uh, ideology of the church is that he's a well, part he of. You're he fucking... probably had to deal with this a couple of times before. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably I his natural reaction by now. He probably started off by trying to argue with these people, <laughs> and now he's just gotten to a point of, whatever, fuck off. Uh, I'm eating I an apple. This apple's pretty good. <laughs> Come to this hellhole, this den of devils. How familiar are you with this church? I'm, I'm familiar enough to know it encourages <laughs> death by AIDS by preaching its okay to sin okay. To, to be gay from the pulpit. You guys probably march in the local gay pride parade. Yeah, I do. Yeah, see, you do. <laughs> yeah, I do. So that's a, that's a march straight to hell. That's what that is. A march straight to the hell. The march ends in hell? I don't believe people would go. Society. You're destroying the family. You're destroying our culture. You're destroying their rectums. You're destroying their health. You're destroying their sex. <laughs> You're wicked. I know more gay families who are healthier than some of the heterosexuals. There's nothing healthy about a man thinking he's a woman or a woman thinking thinking he's a man, uh, or his a woman anus thinking he's a man open and getting bloody, there's nothing mentally or physically healthy about that. You don't know what healthy is because you're sick yourself. In the people that I've married, I don't ask them about their sex life. Because you're wicked and you don't care about people. I'm talking about heterosexual. Sex is for marriage. I don't you don't even know what your <laughs> wisdom is for. <laughs> you're a disgrace to you, It's wrong that he doesn't ask them about their sex lives. I need to know what goes on in their sex lives. Uh, well, the only purpose of sex is procreation. Before I pronounce you man and wife, I gotta know, um, do you do a lot of, like, 69ing or... Oh, that's not allowed. Missionary on top to make babies, that's it. I mean, a little... Don't enjoy a little, it. A little blow jay every now and then is okay, though, right? Nope. Not according you to need this to guy. sign the contract with the sex Gestapo that checks on your bedroom <laughs> every now and then. We're detecting uh. non-missionary sex happening. Sex police, get on the ground! Not that suggestively. The pulpit, you're a disgrace to the human race. Amen. You need to get uh -huh. on the straight and narrow. Amen. Trust Jesus. You should. Bike cops. We're here because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, and the scriptures tell us to warn every man. So even though uh, these homos and homo supporters are haters of God, haters, haters of humanity, yeah, they, they, of course, they hate humanity and, and God. Active in the yep. rebellion against God and their revolution against moral right here in this country and in the world, still the love of God compels us to come out here. The hand of mercy is reaching out love to you. these homos and their supporters, trying to give them life because. And don't you understand? We hate these faggots because we love these faggots. Yeah, yeah I, I don't get it. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. Makes sense to me. Why not? I hate you and you're going to roast in hell forever. But I love you. And so God tells me to come talk hate, to you. I, I hate everything that you do and are. <coughs> but I love you, man. I love you. First, he does it's triumph this, over judgment. It's this delusion, you know. I'm doing this for the greater good. You know, I'm going to, to burn you and everything else, but it's for the greater good. The greater mm -hmm. good. I know what's better for you. So you need to start. Uh, you need to start a German drunken peasants ripoff where you fucking take on Muslim videos and shit, and that'll fix the problem. Yeah, and get me into mu jail. Much like how we've <laughs> we've destroyed uh, we've destroyed you know Christianity here single handedly. Mostly me, but you know other people <laughs> helped. Single-handedly, yeah, mostly. There, there is more and more atheist channels cropping out, or skeptic channels, better put. Yeah, sure, sure. Good. But you know, it is kind of weird, you know, that um, we can, you know, we can hear, look at these people, be like, these are fucking morons. You know, we don't have to hold our tongue. We're not worried about someone coming and being like, ah, you don't talk that way about these people. Talk any way I want about them. Look at a bunch of fucking cretinous buffoons to me. <laughs> Well, look at look at that fucking shirt, dude. Ugh. Can we watch why Trump will smash Hillary? I knew you'd want to watch that. It's really long. We're not gonna be able to watch the whole. Well, we'll thing. watch a little bit anyway. All right. Is it the go. bearded we, fuck again? We lost uh, screen sharing, by the way, or at least I did. Oh okay. shit. Yeah, I did too. All right. Well, we'll add that. We're almost done. This is probably gonna be the last video here. All right. All right. But we'll get you guys. Uh, we'll get you guys some screens, yo.
fucking screen share shit. What is the title of the video? Uh, this is the Communist Priest of Gay Church Rebuke. Oh, I mean the next one. The next one. Oh, oh, it, oh, why Trump will smash Hillary. Trump smash! Like he's going to be the Hulk or something. It's going to be great. Well, he's probably going to an election, if you think of it, because Hillary is unelectable and some people yeah, will. I, believe I do that believe. At least. Yeah. I do believe that Trump, Trump will is win. Trump is anti establishment, at least. I do least. think Trump will win. I honestly do. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of things could change between now and then. But Page boy TJ. Shut up. But, you uh, know, I, I do think Trump is going to win the election. All right, here it is. Well. Donald Trump is going to beat Hillary Clinton and be the next president. Now, let me be clear. This isn't a pro-Trump video. I'm not voting for Trump. But cool. after watching hours of footage of both Trump and Hillary, I've seen an incredible pattern that convinced me to bet $1,000 of my own money that Trump would be the next wow. president. Even though Damn. I'm not voting Even more for him, than me. That's how confident I am. So let's rewind one year to see how Trump got to where he is and how that can show us where he's going. Because as soon as Trump announced, a lot of people thought it was a joke. Thank you, Donald. He is putting me in some kind of comedy hospice. <laughs> you see there Jon Stewart thanking Donald Trump for running. He assumed that it would give him tons of material to satirize, and he assumed that the rest of America would just laugh at Trump. Clearly, it has gone very differently. The only person I'm aware of who predicted this very early on was Scott Adams. He saw Trump's skill about 10 months ago and predicted a landslide victory in the general election. If you want to read more, check out Scott Adams' blog in the description. His analysis has really informed parts of this video. So Trump enters a field of 17 uh, Republican candidates. Scott Adams? Isn't that the dude that writes Dilbert? <clears throat> is that I'm not sure if it's one and the same. I'm pretty sure it is. But whatever. The thing that made Trump popular is the people who are the most vocal in opposing him you know the, the, the oh, yeah. people who talk about microaggressions and what the hell fuck not oh yeah the you know, sjw's they, they have handed him this shit. oh the, and, and then the media circuit surrounding it oh look these violent trump protesters that hit some guy at a rally plus but they're, they're I, just shining a bigger spotlight on trump oh, i think Trump's paul the wall i think paul hit a honest. nail okay hey go ahead Anyone who would want to see Trump president is because, I mean, amongst the community, at least to a certain degree, is because it would annoy the right kind of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, part of the appeal of Obama back in the day is I knew he'd piss off a bunch of rednecks. So, you know, there's definitely that, like, gotta piss these people off vote going on. But... You know, I think Paul kind of hit the nail on the head when it, with Trump just, you know, because all these other politicians, they try to make it seem like it's policy. It's like we were watching Gomer earlier, and he just kept talking in euphemisms. Trump doesn't do that. He just comes right out and like, yeah. this is good, this is bad, you know, and it's very, like, he is, based. He is your Berlusconi. I don't yeah. know. Berli yeah. He was the president of Italy. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you Prime bought Minister. that thing. Oh, yeah, Prime Minister. Uh, you bought that thing. Remember the thing with, the, like, the penis oh yeah was that him uh, yeah that was him cool uh, it was like a little doll of him sweet <laughs> but yeah he's just very he's uh he's just he boils everything down to like super basic like good bad good yeah. deal bad deal mexicans are rapists trump do this trump trump win trump win exactly yeah great like they, he, he's figured out that we don't want to know like we don't want to know what your policy is we don't <coughs> even care if you have one we just want to know that you think it's great no, I think it's it's mainly because, at least from my impression of U.S. politics, everything is so scripted and planned. It is. Every speech is scripted and planned. There's no real, you know, no real conviction anymore involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Hillary epitomizes yeah, that for exactly. a lot of people. I mean, like, she's like, if you want to talk about scripted and planned, like, you'd have a tough time coming up with a better example than Hillary Clinton. Uh, anytime Hillary's actually been confronted with something she wasn't prepared for, she almost always gets angry at people. Oh, what are you asking me this question for? Oh, and uh, angry Hillary, that's like when you fucking see, like, the rare glimpse of the true Hillary coming out. And what and you know what is it? It's a fucking angry, shrill, entitled monster that just wants things, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty scary shit. At least Trump's honest about it. With huge no, amounts not. of money to no, I mean he's honest he, about he, being a power hungry piece of shit. Well, yeah, he, well he's vague enough to get away with not being honest about it. I he's not. What, he, he, I haven't heard Trump say, "I'm a power hungry piece of shit." Oh, no. It's like <laughs> you know, like it's like that George Carlin routine where he's talking about the appeal of Clinton. Is like, at least Clinton was honest about being full of shit. 
Like, it's not like he came out and said it, but you, everyone knew. It was just, like, out there in the open and practically right. advertised in your face. I think Trump's kind of like that. He, he, you know, he, even if he does something evil, he's like, what? I'm a businessman. I got to do what I got to do. Power. You know Wheeling how it is. Dealing. I'm a, I'm a deal maker. I make deals. You know, that's that's kind of like, I think he is. He does kind of yeah. advertise, like, I'm sides. power hungry. I'm power hungry, and I play the game, and I play the game well. I think well, he, he sells he people in part of what he, he said. He also knows the right things to say. You know, attacking Mexico isn't that stupid as it seems when you consider that most of the blue-collar jobs have been outsourced there. It kind of hits a nail to certain people. Oh, yeah, you and um, the, the thing is that... Uh, we made bad so deals just, with China. Not, we did make bad deals. I mean, like, we he's, made bad it, deals with Mexico. He's, he's honestly right when he says we've made bad trade deals with other countries. Things, I mean, you know, when I make even most liberals you know, agree with Europe, that. Uh, when, when, the, when the Berlin Wall came down, a lot of industries moved to Poland, started building factories, and they created a middle class in Poland. And as a result, some of the factories moved back to Western Europe. Mexico is a fucking black hole. You know, it, it, it sucks in all the jobs out of the United States, all of the manufacturing jobs. But because seven out of ten Mexicans have to pay a bribe at one point in their life and because everything is so fucked and corrupt, let's be honest here, if a, a country in the Americas deserves a revolution, it's probably Mexico. And um, because of that, there's no middle class being created there. So it just sucks up all manufacturing jobs, but nothing comes out in return. Plus, it's all it's run just, by cartels and shit, too. I mean, you know, yeah, there, so there's... Trump hit a nail. It, 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 it would actually be a, a good point to, to point a finger at Mexico and say, yeah, stop screwing over your own fucking people. Yeah, you know, like uh, in El Paso, Texas, which borders uh, Juarez, which is like the murder capital of North America, there's all sorts of crazy crimes that go on there, gang activity and drug smuggling and... Uh, People, human trafficking, all that. So that's that's pretty much why. You know, you know the irony that of that too is El Paso is one of the safer large cities in America. Sure. It's, yeah, it's very strange. Right across the border from one of the most dangerous places in Mexico. I guess they get all the violence out over there. <laughs> Maybe. Spend on ads at their disposal. What does Trump do? He makes outlandish, polarizing statements. They're bringing drugs. They're yep. bringing crime. Because you know they're they're going to get them attention. And some. I assume are good people. So no. <laughs> I will get rid of gun-free zones on schools. My first day, it gets signed. Okay. Yeah, right away. The second he's in office, boom. Guns no more gun-free zones. Yeah. Guns in school. Yeah, it, Sounds it, it great everywhere. Me so much of Berlusconi. <laughs> Berlusconi would be like a week before the election. He would uh, announce, "I'm going to abolish the property tax." See, one, one thing Berlusconi yeah. got away with that, that Trump probably couldn't get away with here was, you know, he was banging underage prostitutes and stuff, huh. too. Yeah. So. Well, Trump was fucking his daughter, <laughs> so, I mean. Uh, yeah, well. Okay. Well, you know, speculation yeah. on my part, whatever. I don't think Trump's going to fucking even I see this to sue me, but. He said he wants to fuck her, and, you know, they've he taken some... He said he would if she wasn't his daughter. And they've taken yeah. some suggestive pictures together. They really uh, have. I mean, there's, uh, like... There's pictures of, like, her sitting in his lap as, like, a grown woman, and, you know, <laughs> he kind of has that look in his eyes, like, yeah, I'm a lucky man, she, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, she is attractive, yeah. so what can you do? <laughs> Ben's oh. like, come on, you know, if you've got a super yeah. hot daughter that's willing to fuck you, you know, just come oh. on, guys. It's not you what I said. It's not what I said. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, Trump is going to win. Um, I think this is a, uh, that's enough show. We're pretty much done. Um... Trump's going to win the election. Change boy, TJ. You're going to lose, Scotty. Scotty says he's not going to pay me now, by the way. What? Yeah, Scotty's like, I, I, fuck that. Oh, man. totally out of context shit. We'll discuss that later, TJ. All right, Next fine. time we come back. But you won't take Paul's bet. So you're, t you're saying, oh, I'm so now you're back to confident uh, big dick TJ. Oh, man, Trump's going to win. Why don't you take the bet, TJ? Okay. So, uh, Kraut and T, uh, I don't know if his uh, link is in our description right now. Well, we're not streaming live, so oh, it yeah. doesn't matter. So we're, add we're adding it to it afterwards. I forgot we weren't streaming. <laughs> Fucking stupid. We usually do. Yep. Anyway, so well, his description... Thank you for having me on. Yeah, his description, his link is down there in the description. Go subscribe to his channel. I Thank you for being on, Kraut and T. It was really uh, yep. interesting having you on here. Um, Thanks for well, thank uh, the interesting discussion, yeah. um, and uh, thank you. Uh, thank everyone watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we will see you guys in Seattle for the Seattle meetup. Be sure to be there, you fucking pieces of shit. Yeah. Peace out. Do it.
See you Monday. See you Monday. Fuck you, Paul. Next.